Welcome back to Collider Live, the best show on the damn YouTubes. I'm Rocky Stryer, across from the most evil one, Dorina. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy to be here with my three favorites, four favorites, Cody in the booth. Oh, no. oh when you said it, Good it made say. me remember Good that say. it was Tuesday. Who is it Tuesday? I don't even know. I just said it. Mark Riley, is it Tuesday, our producer? It's Tuesday. It is Tuesday, and it's December 10th. Things, you learn Things something new every day. Every day we, we, we got some news for you. John Roca in the house. Hello. Hello, sir. Hey, Do you Roca. like this? I got this yesterday. I ordered online. It's a, from the Banana Republic factory. Well, is it a nice design? I hate ordering clothes online. I was yeah, gonna, I like it. I was going to ask if you went shopping at Abercrombie and Fish. Ah. All right, it works. Then I'm all right with it. <laughs> I, I don't feel that way. But I dig it a lot, and okay. you and Riley sitting next to each other, you're in the same color scheme. That's right. Hey. You got a thing going on. I'm going to go chop wood later. It's like a bromance thing. I'll do a bromance with this Yeah, I got a bromance with this guy. Oh, look at that. Also nice. Caressing are the you face. A lo- are you trying to be a lumbersexual? A lumbersexual? <laughs> I don't. What the hey. fuck is a lumbersexual? Yeah. Two good points. Yeah, like Holy it. shit. We is, is I don't judge the Have you not heard about that? I heard somebody. It's not mine. I just heard somebody say it. It's yeah. like when you, have, when you look like Paul Bunyan, but you're hot. <laughs> you want to know what? I think like I dig that. I want to be on that dating app. <laughs> yeah. 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 It probably, probably exists. Also, Roka, yeah. I noticed your throne looking lovely as ever. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. What is it that I texted you today? Somebody commented, I want to see a biopic on John Roka's <laughs> chair. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, the life of a John Roka <laughs> chair. Cody Hall in the booth. Hey. How are we all doing? Hi, Cody. I think we're doing weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's Every- Tuesday. It, it is Tuesday. feels <laughs> off. But, I mean, in a good way. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, I, I really love that you're on the show, but I hate that we can't see you. I love it. I see him in I my like mind. I like to avoid eye contact as much as possible, so this is great. I this also is true. watch back a ton and see all the things Cody does to us, and I am so mad at every single one of them, but it's too good to be mad at. Yeah, you just, you just have to accept struggle. it. Yeah. yeah, he shits on all of us. I mean, I do. no oh, yeah. prisoner. Cody yeah. shits on all of us? Oh, yeah. Are you oh. unaware? Did you not oh, know this? God. You patient zero mother effer. What the hell are you, you saying even about me? Start with that shit. Oh, I don't know you got this narrative. I got you sick, John. You got, you got everybody in the office sick. Now my girlfriend's homesick. Wendy's homesick. I right. hope you're happy for yourself. Right. I'm the one who Why caused all of Los Angeles bit. to get sick, John. Did yeah, you just call her me. not my girlfriend's homesick? I said now my girlfriend. Oh, now. You know my throat's feeling a little funny. I blame you. Are you the monkey from Outbreak? No, it was Ken actually. Happening? I think Napsock's oh. patient zero. Oh, I thought it was me, John. Hold on, hold on. I have such a bone to pick with this entire thing because for my whole life. If somebody is sick, I go hug them. Mm -hmm. When you are sick, you need love. You need affection. You need attention. You need to be taken care of. Number one. Number two, I could just as easily get sick at the grocery store as if I'm talking to you. That's true. We have no idea where we get sick from. When people go up to people, I'm like, you got me sick. What the? Are you a a scientist? (laughs) Did you examine their germs and then your own germs and then present them the DNA test? Yes, Trust I, me, ma'am. That's I'm a scientist. <laughs> I put it in the petri dish and I looked at it. Off and the, tray. Tray. the DNA made you leave? You, you hop train there? I, I was like, I'll get off at this stop. In general, now. I can't stand that. Like, if I'm sick and everybody around me is like, oh, oh, it's like, motherfucker, if I'm sick, I'm washing my hands, I'm curelling, I'm not coughing on you, I'm keeping my own business. Let me come into work. But Let it's me do air. my job. But it's your air. air. No, yes. We share we the air. air. But then air. what if you come and hug me and then I breathe on you and you get sick? This yeah. drives me mad. Okay, so, so what if I go to the grocery store and I pick up a box of cereal that somebody who just licked their hand touched? Mm. Mm. You think <laughs> How many you, people do you think was that, do that? Was that a, a joyful? A lot? It was more like a understood. I don't know okay. who licks their hand and touches it. Not on purpose. But like, you know, they're babies and stuff. You ever seen a baby go in a grocery store? You think that they're not spreading their germs? They're like, oh, everywhere. Yeah. I've seen a baby everywhere. lick their hand and grab Frosted Flakes. So, yeah. 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 I mean, isn't that why Cody got sick, Cody? Uh, for my baby? Yeah. 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 Oh, you blame the so baby. Cody's baby got the entire yeah, my collider kid, John. office. You want to do that? You want to blame a three-month-old? <laughs> You're blaming him. I'm not blaming him. I love your kid. <laughs> it's your president of the United uh, States. The whole thing is so stupid. It's so you stupid. You know what's not stupid? Wait, like, you think Cody's body invented the sickness? Can I? Cody's body, like, grew the illness inside him. He's patient zero. Inside him, his body was like, yeah, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to get ill. Let's nope. get everybody motherfucking sick. I'd like, like to Like, there's no way. He went somewhere. You don't think he's an evil genius, though? Yes, I do think that. Well, there you go. But just not in this way. Yeah, this could be a long play by Cody Hall here. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, just to, to wipe out, out the, the office. The, 
patient zero is a, a term we call ball busting amongst friends. Yeah. Oh. I, don't, I don't understand that you. I, I, I mm-hmm. get your point though. I get your point. People Correct. take it too I just seriously. So, I I hate. Well, are you the person that says people should stay home when they're sick? No. Okay. No. Yeah, because you were saying, I, I let ten, me come in and do work. Ten especially years, you. In ten years, I have not taken one sick day. Ten wow. years. I've never called out sick. I just... Oh, good <laughs> for you. My God, Cody, I was meanwhile, so with you there. Meanwhile, everyone else around her has called out sick because she's come in sick, gotten them sick, and they've And then they home. shouldn't call out. But is it because... your job. But is it because you're young, though? Oh, good point. Maybe. It's what because I'm young. Because you have, like, a better mm. immune system than the Dude, rest of us old fuckers. my immune system is shit. No. Oh, it's because you don't crap. sleep. Yeah, I have no. Oh, that's I true. Have basically, mm. no or immune fart. system. It's gone. Yeah. Do you think farting helps your immune system? Maybe. Yeah, you sure. gotta, it's gotta, gotta be gotta healthy for that you shit. guys. Release it. Yeah. yeah, like that. You guys all agree on something that I feel like isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes sense. What's it like to be on the other side of that? Is it weird? I'm, I live here. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I live. <laughs> I don't know what it's like to be on yes. your side. You're like, I've never been to the other side. <laughs> this is the only thing I know. No. Great sh- shirt, Roxy. Thank you so much. I was just telling the guys that yeah. I got this from my dad because my dad doesn't believe in birthday or Hanukkah or any of those presents. But if I do something that makes him proud, he gets me a rocker tea. That's awesome. Either like something from a concert he promoted or somebody gave it to him because that, like my Joan Jet one, she took it off herself and handed it to my dad because he was in that industry. All That's my cool. life, all my life, starting the time I was like six, you didn't do anything to be born. What'd you do? <laughs> What'd you do? That's true. You just showed up. So we all just showed up in, in an annoying a, way. This was a recent, <laughs> a recent <laughs> present. Yeah. Speaking of rockers, uh, Roxette nice. has passed nice. away, nice. which is sad because yeah. she nice had transition, an not yeah. nice that she passed. No, no, yeah. right, nice transition. Yes, I was gonna well, say not full nice. Roxette, right? The female Ooh, in Roxette. Is. Yes. Uh, there were what's two her name? Marie uh, Fredrickson. Fredrickson. Yes. Marie Fredrickson, 61 yeah. years old. Yes. Uh, yeah. Com- uh, bomber. Complications from a brain tumor from a few years ago. Motherfucking brain tumors, tumors yeah. man. We got to figure this shit out. Hey, can yeah. you turn well, me up in the yellow? I can. Yeah, I can. Thank you. But it's all Thank you so much. How you doing? I'm better now. Mm. This is such a good song, you guys. We're yeah. going to karaoke the crap out of this this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are you not Uh-oh. coming? You're not coming, Rox. You mother. Wait, is it Friday? Yeah. yeah. I'm still good. I'm okay, still good. good. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? I'm still good. I just remembered. I have work on Saturday night. Okay. Friday, I have work until about n- nine, and then I'll be there. When does it start? Eight. Nine. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do do Eight or nine. No. <laughs> no. Just, While no. we're karaoke Arena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Arena, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Come on, Riley, Roca, Roxy. Come on, Roxy came up with a good song. Cody is also here. (laughs) Whoa. Cody, we need to think of an R nickname for you. Well, we. He didn't want to even play that game. I I don't even know where to say. (laughs) Cody, (laughs) to make my name into an R? Yeah, like. Rakodi. Rakodi. You understand my silence. Rody. Sarav the corn in the chat is saying Roxy's the type of person who eat radish just so she can fart regularly. Ooh. So is that maybe, a thing? Maybe you need to eat radishes. Wait, is radish a fart machine? Maybe. Is yeah. that? But you, if you've never tried it, you might as well. I garlic. like radish. Garlic is also. Oh. I, I eat three cloves of garlic a day minimum. <sighs> that makes a lot Even of sense. Even if it means at the end of the day I haven't done it and I have to take a clove of garlic and eat it. Do you do it in the morning? Wait, what? All the time. It's not good for the breath. I was gonna say. Yeah, it's fine. Why well, does this does this explain a lot no, of things? No, because it's <laughs> incredible. Usually, I'm very like my nose is like very sensitive. And to you garlic. don't smell garlic. Me I never too. Smelled it on you. Yeah, I, I usually wait until later at night. Oh uh, yes, yeah, um, but I I am a huge believer that garlic solves all illness. Mm-hmm. Like garlic is the jam. Mm-hmm. I, oh, I love it. It so makes much. my stomach hurt. Maybe because I'm a vampire. I don't know. Do a ginger shot after. Is that what I should do? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try it. The gin, because mm-hmm. I'm with you on the the ginger shot. The ginger shot. But, it, but every you morning. just said that you can't say I'm with you on and then no, say no, no, a no, new I'm thing you. that Sorry. hasn't been presented. I jumped ahead in the story. Hold on, real quick. The garlic <laughs> on a piece of toast. I was I was feeling sick, so this could be for everybody feeling sick. Sure. And they said put garlic, a clove of garlic, and like spread it on the toast. And I remember eating it and not getting sick. So I'm with you. That's what I'm saying. The and then do the ginger shot, shot to yeah. make your Rad- stomach Bradley feel better. Riley just went into his own little Roxy, wellness corner. Follow. Yeah, I followed. I followed. The 
If the garlic is making your stomach hurt, mm-hmm. it helps for your immune system. Mm-hmm. And then take the ginger shot okay. after, and that'll settle your stomach. Okay. You I'm going to try that. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to text you a very strongly worded. I'm sure. Hex. No, yeah. those shots. <laughs> a very, I'm going to hex you. A very strongly worded hex. <laughs> those shots, like, make up. I spend half of the money I make on shit like that. Yeah. It, which is the dumbest thing of all time. I make I, it. I, if somebody tells me something will keep me healthy, I will fucking use it. Like I, wow. because of how many hours I'm working. If somebody's like, buy this thing and you won't get sick, I'm like, okay, yeah. like a moron. Okay. I mean, I'm sure half the stuff I put into my body, it's like a, a placebo. Do you have a, a juicer? No. Get a juicer. Oh my god, those are That's... really expensive. And who has time for that? Uh, put also... it on an Amazon an Amazon wish list. You know, you got it like a camera last year for Christmas, so I'm sure you can probably get. That, remember, I cried my eyes out. Yes. I do remember this. That was crazy. But the juicer is the greatest invention for us because then you don't have to spend 15 bucks on a ginger shot. You get it fresh. You make it fresh every morning. You're welcome. This is American stuff, man. Yeah. American yeah, no, yeah. Stuff. John and I are just like, we just take like uh, Vicks. Vicks yeah. Rub. yeah. <laughs> like Vicks for everything. What's wrong with you people? Like, or, or your grandma just... shows up with some kind of leaves that she makes together out in yeah. the yard, and that totally fixes you. Yo, that That's is a, a real thing. Shit. Oh, you're yeah. supposed to like m- put onions on your feet when you sleep and stuff. Or mm-hmm. if your throat hurts, you just take a tequila what? shot. Yeah. yeah. A tequila shot. Yeah. yeah. Whiskey is better for the throat. Oh. Do you do oh, that too? I've I've done the the. What you don't agree? Is that what you do? But you need the spiciness. Yeah. To get you dip your whiskey content down every day. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm not feeling so hot. I'm gonna. <laughs> no, you do. Yeah. Warm up the whiskey. <laughs> Why would Shoot you it though? and then yeah. do the lemon. Exactly what you just said. I love being <laughs> drunk <laughs> on a mountain mm-hmm. yeah. in a hot tub. I want that. <laughs> oh, let's go to a mountain oh, hey, get drunk. Alex. Oh, Alex being isn't here though. Drunk. Oh, you're you're being the sexy drunk. Yeah. Kind of thing. Drunk. Drunk. I miss being a drunk, man. What? Every time. Like, oh, drunk. Rocks, no. You don't miss that? I, I don't miss You guys black, might not have ever I, don't, I think I we don't got miss pretty close to right. I don't miss blacking out. I don't miss being an idiot. Like, I like I'm an idiot yeah. now, but I'm more of an idiot drunk, so I try not to When I went home from my 10-year reunion, I reminded my my girlfriend that at our five-year that I punched her in the face. And mm, it was, that's and nice. It was better times. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. anyway. Ah, memories. But, so maybe it's good that you don't drink anymore as much like that. Mm. <laughs> it was, those were the days. Am I right, people? Mm. Am I right? I was mm-hmm. the 20s in the military. I drank like a motherfucker. What did you oh, do? Yeah. There what? are holes all over the South in walls from when I was in my What's 20s. What's drunk the South like? What? Oh, uh, now? Yeah. So fun, chill, relaxed, playful. 20s? When he was still angry at the world, oh man! Yeah, same Were you and just same. a complete mess. A mess. Like I would, I would, I would get into fights. I would punch holes in walls. I remember ripping a door off a, uh, like a screen door off a house. Why when you we were think? Fighting. <laughs> you turn into the fucking Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> I, I'm wearing this too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why? No, wow, just uh, back then it was it was a lot of stuff I was negotiating with himself. Let's just stuff you when you're young. You got to yeah. work it out. You know. Yes. There you go. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I want to be a good sweetheart when he's drunk. He's oh, just happy. Oh, works great when he's drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Just, hey, she, uh, yeah. All and, of us are pretty good drunks mm-hmm. now. But yeah. not when before. we're drinking. No, oh no. I, I'm in Roka's camp. Yeah, yeah, you were also right. a mess. Yeah, for sure. Now Rox and I would have gotten fun. into it. Yeah, oh yeah. We would have ripped the paint off the wall. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But either together or apart. Oh, yeah. It would have gone like someone on the team. Yeah, you like a good teammate. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of teammates, you and I went and saw Jumanji last night. Jumanji. Oh, huh. was, it, was it was it that good? Is that is that your review? I would huh, say yeah. I enjoyed. It. Well, well, actually, you're you know. Oh, I'm what? You're the, you're the <laughs> host of the show. I, please. No, I want to hear from you I because your this lead. is the thing. John and I have a tendency to sit near each other in screenings now. Like either he'll be in front of me or I'll be in front of him. We usually sit one row from each mm-hmm. other. Why don't you sit next to each other? Because oh, we both yet. like the aisles. Oh, I don't think we're there. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we're getting there. Oh. And I think everything is a is a, Roxy, a process. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Do you understand? Not there. This was what this you was just a did to our good friend Roxy. Roxy, your exactly. face. You're an you're not friends yeah, yet. Yeah, that's yeah, no, I, no, I think we're friends. I just think we're not <laughs> we are, sitting we're, next we're, to each other at a movie friends. We're yet. working on our friendship. Yeah. But we did it in chapter two. We yeah, did sit next to the way in chapter two, which you were very kind to get me into. We're working on that friendship here. No, John and I have had quite the road. Wait, what uh, needs to happen for you guys to sit together, John? I think, well, we're both like the aisle <laughs> seats. Yeah, that's what. I, that's the excuse that I gave. Yes, yes <laughs> correct. But I think I think it would have to be a move where we're both like went to 
and there was no plus one with us because she always usually she usually has a plus one. Yeah, I, I usually bring... try to bring a plus one. So it's like if if we show up at a screening, and I think if we don't, if no one else is with us, I think we would actually sit next to each other. I don't want to call out your plus one by name because some people know who it is. But why does your plus one always pretend that they don't know who I am? Shannon. Yeah. Okay. I don't mind calling, <laughs> calling him out. That's kind of our every single. I mean, I've met him literally five thousand times have, at have. every comic con, every time, and he goes to stick his hand out every yeah. time, and I'm like, motherfucker, oh, why? No, no. But he's he's just sticking his hand out. He's just saying hello. Yes, he knows who you are. Oh, he's very well. He's just well. shaking her hand. Kalinowski tells him all kinds of stories about you all's relationship and friendship and stuff. So, Whoa. I mean, friendship. You know, relationships are friendships. And so he he oh, knows right. about Kalinowski. the situation. Kalinowski. 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 Hope you're doing Get well. It? But yeah, so he knows all about you, and he's well aware of you. And so uh, he, he doesn't likes ever you. seem aware, well aware of, of me. Hmm. Every time. He's just very, like, he's okay. one of those introverts. So anyway. So Jumanji. Uh, we did. We went and saw Jumanji. And the point of what I was trying to say before John said we're not close is that, <laughs> is that I always try to gauge John's reaction during the movie. And I found out he tries yep. to gauge mine, too, because we're both very, very vocal people in life. So theoretically, you should know how we're feeling about a movie while we're watching right. it. Because if John likes a movie, he is l not in a bad way, but loud during mm. it. Either <laughs> laughing or, oh. Whatever it is, and same, I do the exact same thing where I'm vocal, mm -hmm. uh, not shouting sentences or anything. And I will say, yesterday you were laughing quite a bit during Jumanji. Yeah, I thought it was really funny. I enjoyed it. Not as good as the first movie, absolutely, but I thought some of the changes they made were interesting to explore. I thought the gimmick they used kind of started to drag in the middle, but then right when it was getting to be dragging too much, they adjusted and fixed it, and then it was fine for the rest of the movie. I yeah. agree with that yeah. adjustment. Oh, I was that. really happy they they altered something yes. because I was feeling a little like, okay, and yeah. then, well, bam, and yep. I was back in. So I'm with yeah. you. My only, my only real negative is that they presented some... Um, Emotional stuff between the friends that they did they kind of wrapped up too quickly and too easily mm -hmm. Which could have been explored a little bit more like Alex They give Alex Wolf a little bit more to do in terms of like his journey of being like depressed of the out of the four friends He's kind of not happy with how things have gone in his life since the last Jumanji So I, I would have liked to have seen them explore that more a little bit more But that's my only real complaint other than that. I thoroughly enjoy and there were some really touching Scenes between the actors playing Danny DeVito and uh, um, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. So, do you wish that this was a summer movie? I think it actually. That's a great point. Where I hadn't thought of it at all. Totally belongs in the summer with the way it was presented. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely. it was released a little too late in I, the year. Yeah. I think I just. It, it's really fun. I had a great time yep. watching it. There was nothing about it that made me annoyed, frustrated, angry. Or I, wanting it, it to end. No, or, no, mm. it was it was fun. But I just kept thinking, I wish that it, this was a summer night and I had come in and it was just a different atmosphere because it feels like a strange release time for right. mm. well, they're just, what they showed. The yeah, other, I mean, they're capitalizing on what they did last time. Yeah. I mean, right. it came out the same year as Last Jedi and surprised everybody with yeah. how well it did. So I can yeah. see why they put it out. I, I really time. liked the first one. Yeah. You liked the first one I as do. Well. I, I mean, I was at the junket for it uh, in Hawaii, and I remember them saying, and I've said this before, them saying over and over again, we just hope we come in second place to, to Star Wars Jedi, yeah. on opening weekend. That's all our aspirations right, are. Right. They had no idea this thing was going to blow up the way right. it did. Mm -hmm. And the, because it did, they were so surprised by it. And I agree with you, Riley. I think they thought they could repeat the same pattern. Yep. But I think they're going to get snake bit with this. They, they I might. I don't think it's going to make the money that um, the last one did. Does any part of you, after seeing this movie, mm -hmm. keeping it spoiler free, want to see a third one? Yes, if they correct a little bit of the mistakes of the second one. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I'd be down with it. And I'd be down with it being in the summer. Do you guys like? I'm assuming since you're, you both seem to like the first one better, do you like yeah. that or the 90s Jumanji? Like, what's your favorite? Oh, I don't like the 90s Jumanji. <gasps> oh, yeah. um, it's not my jam. Shit, man, that's my, I like, my jam. I like both a lot, but okay. probably the OG. Probably yeah. 90s oh, Jumanji. Wow. Probably. Yeah, and the, but this all one the was, Robin Williams stuff. Yeah. I think that I think that if you guys, if you are looking for a fun time and you want to have some popcorn and laugh a little bit, this is totally a great movie to go to. Yeah. I'm seeing mixed reviews on the internet, and some people are bashing this movie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. Yeah. That I don't really get. Yeah. It, there was nothing about it to me that was like, they tried to mix it up a lot, and I think Aquafina is a great addition to the team. She's really fun. Totally. Uh, I, they 
obviously have some of the same cast and so there's some of the same beats but they try not to do that over and over yeah. again yeah speaking of bashing movies did you yeah. guys see elijah wood's tweet no I, I saw this, D, but for the people who did not, what exactly so, uh, did Elijah yeah. say? So Variety, um, basically, uh, like a lot of other outlets, did a worst movies of oh. the year list. Like everybody. I mean, the, yeah. the Razzie Awards exist, right? Like this is something that's been going on for a while where, where outlets do their best and their worst list of the year. Mm. So uh, Elijah ended up retweeting them and just asking, what good does this do? Yeah. And a bunch of people retweeted it, including myself, because I was mm. like, it's true. So yeah. so it's an interesting thing to talk about because we are in that space. We, we have done those things sometimes. So yep. what do you guys think? Do you think we should stop doing this? Is this something that hurts filmmaking? Like, it's just an interesting thing that I thought happened. It's, I'm of two minds of it because I'm from that generation where I remember growing up and those are the things you looked forward to. Like, right. What was your favorite critic? What did they hate that right. you might have liked? And why did they hate it? But... I've seen the movement over the last five years of people pushing back against this, especially a lot of creatives saying, like, this poisons the water. Like, why do you have to come out and say the films that you hated? Because a lot of those films on that list, I think they purposely chose certain clickbaity mm -hmm. movies to put on. Can you tell me last Christmas is worse than some of the other yes. horrific? Yes, like, I agree. Well, well fair. <laughs> but some of the other horrific films that have come out this year that are absolutely terrible. No. They try to pick ones that are going to get people's attention and get people talking about it. But overall, yeah, I wonder what good it does because it kind of craps on people's uh, uh, work. I'm also of a couple minds on this yeah, yeah. because I think that it, it is an interesting thing to see. But I've talked to you about this before, John, mm. where you asked me why I, am, I don't call myself a critic and why I don't want to join any kind of critics group mm -hmm. because I – don't like to review movies that I don't like mm -hmm. and I think that means that I can't really be a critic because mm -hmm. that's not fair then mm -hmm. I can't just give everything a good review and for the people who watch the show who say Roxy loves everything I really only talk about the things I love mm -hmm. sometimes I'll talk about the things I don't like if for some reason I think it's funny or ridiculous like a last Christmas but I really really try to focus on the things I love also as an actress and as an aspiring filmmaker I hope that one day that gets paid forward to me so I don't make my first film and people rip it to shreds on right, the internet. Right. So I think that for, for me personally, I don't click on these lists, I don't read them. You guys know my favorite movie of last year was Life Itself. It was on everybody's list apparently, so yeah. it, it, I pay no mind to it. It was, it was on everybody's worst list? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. from what I hear, again, I don't really read them, but that's what people were telling me. I know it had a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. Right. So it, I, I feel torn because People have a right to know what movies they shouldn't spend their money on. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't know what good it does other than that. And it's not like the movies are currently in theaters, mm -hmm. so or at least not most of them. What do you think, Dave? I mean, I, I'm kind of <laughs> on the same page as you. Um, I grew up as you know somebody that loved being a you know ridiculous movie snob and i love okay. crapping on things i literally i grew up as somebody that's like oh you like that like whatever i'm smarter than you because i like this other thing right which is the dumbest way to think but that's how a lot of us are raised mm -hmm. right and so uh, but now that i'm in this space and i met filmmakers and I, I i anybody that is creating something even if it turns out to be not great there's a lot of people cast and crew involved that work really hard on these things yeah. right and and Similar to, yeah, I hated the Lion King remake, but I still can appreciate the way it looks and I can appreciate, you know, the, the artist. <laughs> well done, Cody. And the craft. The, the <laughs> artist behind it and, and how much time that was spent, right? Like, you, I think that you can find something good out of everything that's yeah. out there, even, even if it's a bad movie, quote unquote, right? Right, right? And so I think Elijah Wood's doing that because he, I mean, he produces a bunch of movies. He's not just an actor, right? Like, he, he actually really, and, and he's, he's responsible or he's behind one of my favorite movies of the decade Mandy yeah. and all of these movies that I'd, I'd rather see a list of movies you might have not seen mm -hmm. you know than a worse movies list like what's what 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 is that going to do for me I'm not going to watch them right mm -hmm. I'd rather I'd rather just tell me tell me about stuff that I need to see that I haven't seen yeah. I think that that's more productive Mark mm -hmm. what do you think yeah Roxy what you said I really responded to because it's been something I've been thinking about quite a bit lately as I really kind of dive in more to my own writing and mm -hmm. and kind of spreading it out even on my Patreon and focusing on that. And you look at these movies, to your point, and to your point, how hard is it to make a movie, especially in the studio system, mm -hmm. and to like go in and crap on it if that's what it is. I, 
I don't. I'm not necessarily against like the the movies that didn't work, and they and critics say, hey, this in a, in a very thoughtful, constructive way. Yeah. But when you have like the third part of this list for Variety saying the last half hour of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that's that that, that doesn't, doesn't qualify. That does not qualify. Right. And that's a whether it's a nitpick or just a shot. I we're talking about worst movies, and you're t- you're telling me they said that the last half the hour the last the worst half movie? hour that's the best of part once of the movie. A, thank you. Subjective, sure, right? It, you didn't like that? Oh no, I hated the last half hour. Ooh, okay, so that. you interesting, so, but you still don't believe do you, it qualifies. No, I don't okay. think it qualifies at all. But and click baby, that's my point. I, yeah, and I don't like that, and I agree with uh, with Elijah Wood's point because I think that in the culture that we're in on social media, it's it's very easy to go and pile on to all right. these movies, and I don't think that really accomplishes anything. And I, I'm very conscious of that in my own reviews now because I, like mm. you, Roxy, I don't consider myself critic. I don't want to be on any critics list to go see these movies because I'm not seeing them, one, yeah. because I listen to you guys now. If you say this movie's not good, <laughs> I'm going to go try to spend my time somewhere else. Right. And I want to give the people, like hopefully in the future, I'm going to be sitting down with some of these people that might have made movies that didn't work and be a colleague and say, how can we collaborate and put the best product for right. yeah. yeah but i mean and also i mean and and roca and i like give each other shit about it like i'll be like the greatest showman sucks right? right i don't really think it's like this horrible movie i just like you know giving him crap because we're friends unlike you guys that are acquaintances mm-hmm. you know so <laughs> so you know basically i <laughs> you slid it right by anyways because yeah. yeah. i know uh, your friendship is really on yeah, s- shaky ground but right i now. also and i also don't care if people say that's a shitty movie like i i think everybody has a right to that opinion yeah. right like, I, I, like I it's just a matter point. of like when people pile on on like a director on Twitter or like somebody that's a creative on Twitter that it's like like kill yourself you know like stop right, making movies right. like that that's going over it influences people to do that and I think yeah. you're right Rox like we're all together we can shoot the shit and say oh we didn't like it like Roxy and I had last Christmas discussion was very funny off mic after that that morning and just having a discussion was fun right. that's different you put it out for public consumption like this where are where's the counter which is where are the movie reviewer reviewers telling you your top five worst movie reviews of the year? Right. Where's the counter to that? Yeah. Can you believe he or she said this about this movie and constructed the sentence of the review this way? That's how you counter. And then you go, well, because you because critics seem to get away with criticizing but not being criticized themselves. Right. It's kind of a free reign, and I don't think that should be existing. I want to know in the job title. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cody, what do you think? I oh, I agree with all this. I think uh, there's nothing wrong with like saying a movie sucks. It's just when you're like, you're being so mean spirited and like so happy to be shitting on movies. That's what I- encourages shitty behavior from other people. Yeah, yeah. I always you- try to keep in mind too, like you know, a movie that I didn't love, but I'm not gonna say it was a horrible movie, but I didn't love it was Boyhood. And mm-hmm. then I think about the fact that it takes me, it would take me one minute to go to the internet and bash Boyhood to mm-hmm. say this movie sucks, whatever it is. And what it took him seven years to make the movie, yeah. yeah. So like that's seven years of somebody's mm-hmm. effing life, yeah. Right. It, 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 when you can do that much just destruction in a minute of seven years of somebody's life, I don't know. It's kind of a tough look. This is also, and that's exactly what you said too, though. Like you, it takes you a minute to bash on somebody, but at the same time, like that's a whole minute. That's a lot of energy for me <laughs> to like go and like bash someone. Like why am I going to waste my energy on that? That's right. what I don't get. And I've also noticed, especially in social media, and it really started. I I noticed with last. Jedi and with Ryan oh, Johnson because yeah. I saw this happening a couple years ago around that time that there were a lot of uh, creators, writers, directors that were starting to get hit on social media like Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson was was absolutely pummeled by fans. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that with David Ayer for Suicide Squad. I saw Chris Chris McQuarrie coming out to the defense of Ryan Johnson. I've seen people go after these these creators, these directors, these writers and I find it really troubling. It, it's really uh, unfortunate because then I start to see them take their defensive, they're they're sticking up for each other, and I don't feel like that that's uh, healthy for these people, and I don't feel like it's it's really nice of people. I know it's stupid to say maybe, but it's like be nice to everybody. I don't think but it's stupid to say at all. I believe that. I agree, and I think that because of that, right now we usually go to a commercial break, but I'd rather talk about something we love before we cut sure. to commercial mm-hmm. because we did not yesterday have the chance to talk about yes. Watchmen, yes. and we are all watching Watchmen. <laughs> We're all loving Watchmen, and. Episode eight aired, 
and we have passed the 24 hours that I feel like it's respectful enough to talk about in a spoiler way. So let's do a spoiler Watchmen episode yes. eight conversation. Darina. Spoilers. <laughs> spoiler. Thank you, Cody. Spoiler of the century. Is that, is that your blue dong that you're swinging there? Wow, good for you, Cody and D. Good for you. Definitely some dong in that. Watchmen. Guys, talk to me. Darina, I know that you said that this was your favorite episode favorite so episode far. Favorite episode of the season. I think that was a beautiful hour of television. I did not know how they were going to handle the big blue guy, who mm-hmm. is obviously one of my favorite characters in the whole comic book. Uh, but I, I loved it. I, I think it was a beautiful way of doing a love story on, mm-hmm. t- on TV, a very unique way of, of storytelling. Um, I also was worried about how it was going to look. And obviously it looks a little bit similar to the Zack Snyder movie, right? Mm-hmm. Which is fine because that one looks great. You mean so, how Dr. Manhattan yes. was going to look in that form? Yeah, yeah, just in general, right? Um, I love seeing John talk to Adrian. Like that what that scene I was like, oh my nerd feels were like, holy yeah. crap. Like that was that was awesome. I was very happy with it. Mm, same. This this was it's hard to say. Last episode might still be my favorite, but this is now up there. Because I, like you, love Dr. Manhattan. I, I wanted to know how are they going to pull it off. Mm-hmm. Not only that, just I wanted to see Dr. Manhattan fuck shit up. Yeah. And he fucked shit up. Mm. I was so excited. I'm sorry about it. I'm a big nerd I mean, about don't this. don't be sorry for being It excited. was getting to that point of like how are they going to pull off Dr. Manhattan. And I thought it was so brilliantly done. The mystery of where he is, learning who he is, and then seeing his power come out. That was something that I really wanted to see, the nerd in me, but just how they handled it. It was so beautiful, and the, the yes. performance, just everything. Mm. I, I'm still going crazy. I walked into my house last night and went, I want to watch Watchmen again. I really want to mm-hmm. see that episode again because there is so much going on underneath just like the themes and the, the idea that he's choosing a body and why he chooses this body, and then... So glad they explained that. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of talk on the internet about w- what it meant that a... Per, a blue man chose a black man, and what I I like the fact that Regina King just thought that he was hottest. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like no, that he's sexy. So. It could be as simple as that. Yeah. It could be something deeper, deeper and that's yeah. the, and that's what the this series is doing is the 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 various layers that we have that they deal with in this like kind of alternate future or alternate reality. But mm. I just adored this episode. John, you share a first name with the blue guy. What's up? <laughs> I do. I here's the deal with no this. age. Yeah, I yeah. wish. I would. I would love to be a big document man, Jesus. Which, <laughs> what is amazing is no, you'd be sad. He's sad. I don't know. Maybe. Um, the idea of you don't think Doctor Manhattan the sad. relationships. Well, I don't. I don't know if he conceives of your whisper human voice, emotion. Man. But, but no, because then you're never really quick. Sorry, but yeah. you're never surprised though if you're him, right? Like you know everything that's happening. Right. That's what's so heartbreaking about the character. Right. That's a fair point, and that's a, what she calls him out on. Yeah, right. When's exactly. the last time you were fucking afraid of anything? Exactly. Fucking years or whatever she says. But what I thought was brilliant too is whenever we're in a relationship, isn't it always all the timelines happening with us? All the timelines. You're always remembering the first time. You're always remembering totally. the best times, the mm. worst times. So to me, although Riley's right, it was a unique way to see it presented on the screen. It's legitimately how we actually perceive our relationships. And our we're, memories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Roxy, we were just talking about the journey. We immediately flashed like four or five different memories. That's how we live in our world. Yeah. So why would you? That's great, dude. It, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, 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 that that way. I love. I love what you just said because I think that that's why it did touch home for mm-hmm. so many people. It, when you, whether it's love, friendship, whatever it is, yeah. Even me and you talking about our relationship. I'm sure mm-hmm. as we're we're talking about it, it's like I can think of. Five distinct things like yeah. about the journey, or if you think about your current uh, significant others, your exes, like all throughout the why you hold things against them. There's some things that just never go away, right, some right. things that you remember stronger than others. So mm-hmm. I think that that is why we did connect to it. But I, I will say, I love this episode, I love this show. And this is an emotion I think that they want me to feel, but I do feel incredibly frustrated watching this sometimes. Really? Yeah, because, and I think I'm supposed to, but you, first of all, I'm screaming at the motherfucking television. Mm-hmm. Move, move. One inch to your left, two inches to your right. Go up in the air, duck down, m- fucking move, bitch. Like move, <laughs> get, out, bitch, the get way. out the way. You, right? <laughs> because he, boom, 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 boom. Oh. I'm killing everybody, and now you know that that is behind you. Move. Right, right. But 
but he can't. But why can't you? I just I'm I, this uh, the power of free will. Free will in general is something that is so important to me. And watching somebody who seemingly does not have that because they know everything that's happened is like pulling my uh, eyelashes out one by one. Right. I just want to yeah. I just want to scream for them. Think and, about it. Yeah, T- think not to interrupt, but think about it this way, Doctor Strange. In Endgame, no, I, I hate Doctor Strange. Yeah, ah. I know, I know. But no, the this inevitability. Is a, this is a better version the of Doctor Strange. Yes, She's the inevitability of this needs to happen. No, but that's I need different. to get, and no, so we're gonna. Riley, I, you don't think it's, so? D- it's different because what he says is there are a million five possibilities. Right. What what Doctor Manhattan says is this is what's happening. This is the only this time. Is the only no, no, no. Time so let me clarify. So, so he has he knows that it's inevitable that he has to be taken out by this gun, whatever it is, for her to maybe survive. It's not that he knows it's inevitable that it has to happen somehow. He knows it's happening this how. Right. This right. way. And so Which he has what, to follow that through. But that's so different than this might happen and there's one chance that it doesn't. He's saying this is what's up and she keeps fighting that, which is what I would do mm. if I was Regina King. You fight that, right? That's like what I if somebody tells you this is what's happening, the kind of person I am, I'm right. like, no fucking way. But, and when she goes outside and he says, This is the moment I fell in love with you, she says, You just fell in love with me ten years later. No, I've always been in love with you. Like the whole thing, but, I just want to punch somebody. In a good way. And I think yeah. this is correct because this is the microcosm of what he represents. Right. Which is religion. He represents a god. Totally. He is a god. You are mm-hmm. frustrated by it. Why do children die? God, why do children die? Right. Yeah. Why does this happen? Why is there why war? Does, why does the Blade Runner. Why, why, right, exactly. Why does the lead mm-hmm. singer of Roxette get a yep. brain tumor yep. when she's brought so much joy to so many people with her music? That's the world, right? And you're frustrated because you're like, why is this happening the way it's happening? So if God was actually on earth, he'd be like, this is what's going to happen. This is what's the, this is. What... And you'd watch it happen. You're like, why? 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 And that's what, I mean, as soon as he created those creatures and created the world, you're just mm-hmm. like, he's God. So we're watching him. And he's, when he walked on water, it was like the, the banging on the head type of, of situation. And so this is why he did it the way he did it. And he was so calm about it. Like Shannon last night was like, why wasn't he more dynamic? Like doing no look kills. I'm like, that's not what Dr. Madden, Hatton or God He's would do. He's never been that. That's right. It's not necessary. Just it's done, just, it's done, inevitability. Done, right. It's inevitability. The inevitability yeah. of it. That's, yeah. He knows Inevitable. that it's no matter what, it's going to happen. But I think so, there's something that ha- that he knows that we don't yet. Let me ask you guys this mm-hmm. then. If there's things that he knows that we don't, which I'm sure there are a bajillion of yes. them, but the one that I'm curious about is what he ends up doing with Adrian because mm-hmm. he sends him somewhere. He says, do you want to go? Obviously right. knowing what his answer is going to be and sends him. And then the whole post credit thing with the horseshoe and the cake what is happening here and does, is Dr. Manhattan setting Adrian up for success or failure it's mm. a good question I or think redemption that's what I think yeah I redemption think that would on be, earth redemption would be success success right right on Earth. I'm just putting it in a different way because of the character we know, what happened in the Watchmen comic, how he now ends up on Europa. Yeah. But what would that redemption be then? I what does that look know. like? See, that's where it's like. But I then s- that's. But then that's. Is that part of God's plan or the universe's plan? Right. Like that's yes. the thing. It's like we don't know. It's the same as like how like Rorschach ends up. Right. Does right. that make like why why did he do that? Right. right. Why did Doctor Manhattan do that? Like we mm. don't know. Right. Like that's the thing. He only he knows why these things happen and what and what his his duty is in this timeline or whatever. Yeah. Right. Because he represents time. Let me ask you guys this one. Do you hate him? No. Dr. Manhattan? Yeah. No. Do you? God, no. Yes, I hate him. Really? Yeah, I hate oh, wow. him. Okay, I hate why? Him. Why? Fascinating. I, I hate him. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's... Do people have reasons? Usually, but, but it's is, okay. Is, is, is if, you don't, if you don't know, no, no, that's one it's conversation. It's not that I don't know. It's that I, I hate him for who he is. Okay. I hate what he says. I hate how he acts. Mm-hmm. I I hate him. I Cold, think, calculating, I think it's not without that he, emotion. Does he no, annoy you? No, because he totally has him. I think that he has yeah. way more emotion I than I does. figured he would have. See, I didn't see emotion I, how, when he was sitting like his... in the bar. It was more when he became... Oh, there was emotion in that bar. There was tons of it. When he tells her he loves Does he annoy you as a character in the book? No, no, no. Or what he's representing right now? He doesn't annoy me. Okay, okay. It's the I point hate of the show okay. right now. But why, why? Like the character uh, maybe, itself? Maybe for the reason that I'm not religious. Okay. I don't believe in that. I think that it's That's wrong. Fair. I believe in freedom of choice and mm-hmm. will and power okay. and uh, and people not being all knowing. Even if he is, I think that that's a, sh- a crappy quality to have. If somebody knows everything, what do they have to learn? What do they right. have to gain? What do they have to do with people? Um, but he's not human, I don't, though. I don't appreciate that he still ends up being with Regina. I think that uh, it's a selfish choice because he loves her and he doesn't have to do to her what he does to her. I hate him. I love mm, his character. He's a, he's an excellent character, but no, I I hate him. Okay. This has always been Manhattan's thing, though, which is why he, I push back when people say he's not human. He is human. He's human. He's still at the base human, which is why he pers- he c- pursues love. 
It's ca- kind of like expense. Spock, yeah. right? Where like, yeah, where he has a little bit because of human in to. him, but then right. he, but then he's doing what he thinks is logical. Or right, whatever. but Spock's never had the Spock's uh, weakness or uh, whatever you want as Achilles' heel has always been his emotion. Uh-huh. Doctor Matt Hatton's is always love. Right. Yeah. And, and the and first that's woman human... he was with then cheated on her, gave her gave uh, supposedly, of course, it's gave, her cancer. gave her cancer, but cheated on her with a younger woman with yep. the it's Jew, and then she's still in love with him, and she calls him and leaves the jokes. She's still somewhat in love with him. Lori, it's Lori still, and here he is doing this with Regina because he's fallen in love with her. So he's always, no matter how powerful he is, mm-hmm. he is always still subject to the human emotion of love and destroys things around him mm-hmm. in pursuit of that, it as makes, a human does sometimes. And I don't care, I, I know that people are saying he's not making choices, but I believe it is a choice. Mm. I believe going into that bar is a choice. I believe I think that's himself. absolutely fair. I agree. A, I completely agree with that. A choice for a bigger outcome yeah, that maybe he, a, if a he larger, like yeah the, if he doesn't make that choice yeah. to go tell her that he loves her knowing what he knows for the future it all i think it's all connected somehow it and is, we just don't know how I'm, yet i'm not but even he saying but he still has a choice like Roxy's i'm not saying, even though, saying yes yeah. i'm not saying he's the worst person on the planet i'm not saying anything yeah. other than i hate him like i i oh i, I think he is i understand of all of them i hate him more than i hate adrian should we get you a shirt that says "I hate Dr. Manhattan"? But <laughs> that is a great I like shirt, actually. Actually. Yeah, buddy. I think Cody, so... how do you feel? Oh, this is a good conversation you guys are having. <laughs> good job, gang. Hey, thanks, Cody. Uh, I love this episode, and I love that it kind of put to bed the notion that Lindelof doesn't understand Dr. Manhattan. Oh, that's yeah. what a lot mm-hmm. of people were saying at the end of the last episode. Like he would never come back. Why would he come back to Earth? He gave up on humanity. And I thought this episode showed that Lindelof understands that character perfectly. Yeah. That's a great point, Cody. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I, I'm i now curious at the end of this series or season, if it's not going to get a season two, I'm still confused I'm so, on what's r- happening there. The rumors are there is, is a, season a season two, two, but Lindelof is not coming back. Oh. But, oh. Wow. That then, scares then me. Then I think there should be no season two. But I think for me, one. I'm going back and forth. My favorite Lindelof show is Leftovers. Leftovers, yeah. But I love Lost as well, and I'm wondering with a couple of years distance where Watchmen's gonna fall. It, mm, if, right. it, if it does take that number one spot, if it's two, if it's three, if it if he does do a second season, if Lindelof comes back for how that show gets tainted, if he doesn't, a lot of questions about Lindelof in general. Yeah, wonder, and it's yeah. A, it's also funny that I was one of those like Lost finale haters, and yeah. now I'm like, oh, and and then Prometheus, I'm like, Prometheus was like half really great and half of it didn't like, and now I'm like, I I am a Damon Lindelof fan now. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but it happened with Watchmen. So because you your heart is not just cold. Wait, wait, warm. I don't think it's, it's in there, though. It's beating, actually, it's bleeding. If you, open, your heart if you rip my chest out, you actually find a little box, and then you open it, and it just a little note that says, ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Fool you! <laughs> Guys, we will go to commercial. When we come back, I will do a little bit of crisis talk, because I know people have been tweeting at me about it in the second episode air. I want to talk about that. Also, Joey Ryan's going to be joining us. He wrestles with his penis. That's all you need to know, so stick <laughs> around till the end. My kind of guy. Also, Patty Jenkins news. We've got some stuff about Eternals, Birds of Prey, and we will get to all of that very soon. Here's a dong take. Oh, the fucking dog at the baby. God damn. Sit out! Sit out! 
And I'm going to beat that ass. And I'm going to beat that ass. I want some candy ass! And I'm going to beat that ass. And I'm going to beat that ass. And I'm going to beat that ass. I want some candy ass! Jesus. Jesus. That's just not a big fucking deal. Jesus. 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 I didn't think this was a fucking big deal. <laughs> I like it, but what is it? Royalty-free music? Yeah, but this doesn't sound royalty-free. This sounds epic. Cody Hall? It's royalty-free. Wow! Oh! Roxy, you can write a song around it. We gotta find the person who made this, and we gotta get them to do a Collider Live theme. Okay. Go do that. <laughs> we'll look Why don't you do that? My, <laughs> my favorite Dorina is bitchy Dorina. Like, <laughs> just, okay. Oh, like this morning when you guys you are like, oh, you don't have Apple. I'm like, oh, yeah, where's your Spotify rap list, Vietnam. bitches? What? What? We went on seven timelines and I fell in love with you. What the <laughs> fuck? My big blue hero. He's doing oh, a Dr. Manhattan song. Oh, blue hero. Dude, you're like. I met you in Vietnam. You're doing something here. I love your blue dog. Ooh. I your big you blue dog. This is good stuff. Rena Welcome back Rally to Rally Rally Rally. Rally. I think we found our new right. theme song, guys. <laughs> but it was like, just uh, clip that out, Cody, and that uh, that that's our th song. At first, it was either stroke or singing, like because you were doing this. Por qué no los dos? That was. I was imitating those singers from the '90s when they would hug the mics. <laughs> oh yeah, or like we are the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you lost. Ah! You okay there? <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, that killed me. All right. Whew. Let's come back and do a little crisis talk and then we'll get right into this news, guys. Uh, da -da -da -da. Wow. What was that? Da -da 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 oh, that was Batman. That was, Sorry, that was, I was thinking Tim Burton. Do you think it's better when we're all in our own worlds? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. What Aren't the we all think? anyways, though? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just, looked at, I just looked at your water and remembered that... Uh, that Mark Ellis puts his gum in his water and so felt gross. sick to my stomach. So does Robert Pattinson. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's why I think Mark Ellis is Batman. Wow, that's true. roundabout way to get there. Speaking of Batman, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Hey. Yo, Kevin Conroy last night. Hey. This is a much, much better episode than the first part of Crisis. Oh, yeah, you didn't like that Supergirl episode? I did. Okay. It was fine. Yeah. But episode two, are you watching? I am. Okay, so mm. you, you watched last night? I did. I thought it was infinite but better 
<laughs> infinitely better. Okay. My, my pun I stumbled on, but you get yeah. what I was going for. Mm-hmm. What did you feel? I did. I liked it. I thought it was good. I didn't dislike the Supergirl stuff. I think I know what I'm getting when I go into a Supergirl episode, so I'm like, I don't have my expectations that high. So it was fine. But this, this was fun. The Tom Welling, what did you think about the Tom Welling stuff? Did you like that? Did you not like that? Was it not enough? I actually really liked it. However, okay. a lot of questions. Okay, fair. Like, how? How right. did that happen? Right. And then also, I'm curious from diehard Tom Welling Superman fans how they feel about it. Because yeah. for me, he's not my Superman. Right. But I don't know. Did that feel disrespectful at all to you, what they did with his character? No, I thought it was a... I thought it was an interesting decision. Yeah. And I think like strong you. Strong choice. Yeah, strong choice. And like you, I'm not a massive Smallville fan, mm-hmm. but I thought uh, he was great as Superman on Smallville. He was excellent. Mm-hmm. And so to see him get a little bit of a highlight and then make such and then make such a strong decision about it, I thought, hell, if you're going to be memorable for coming back and doing a cameo on a Crisis Intervention, why not have something people are talking about the next day about what happened to you? I feel like Michael Rosenbaum was missed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, that makes sense. It, he was missed in this. Yeah. Um, hopefully he comes on Clyde a lot at some know. point soon. But that was tough for me. Uh, I also feel like we still have not nailed a live action Lois the way that I would like to. Not since Margot Kidder or ever? Mm. You didn't like Amy Adams? I like Amy Adams for that universe, mm-hmm. but I agree. It's, I haven't I seen love one her since Margot. Mar- yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess I agree. It, but doesn't hold up right. in the way that I want okay. to. Because at the time, I f- well, when I first saw, watched, I felt like fine. But mm-hmm. now I feel like Lois Lane seriously has never been handled appropriately for how a, a woman in 2019 right. needs to be. As soon as right. I saw Emily Blunt. Oh, I, I just forgot about Terry Hatcher, too. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But as as I feel Blunt, the same way about Terry Hatcher, yeah. too, though. Yeah. I, I just feel with, and it's not the actor's fault at all. I, I just don't know that this Lois feels to, but that it's not her fault. Mm. Um, but she w- had a lot of screen time last night and that was a mm. little frustrating to okay. me. Uh, I think that I feel really lucky I watched Legends of Tomorrow because there was so much legend stuff. Was that confusing at no, all? No, because I watched. Cause, oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, okay. Because yeah. that was a lot, yeah. a lot. Uh, Constantine stuff was cool? Yep, enjoy him. Any other? Uh, no, the Conroy stuff, which you just touched on, I thought that was nice to see him be a part of it and uh this is the first time he's ever done a live action batman, live action right? batman yeah 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 that's this is cool. the way you do it yeah the, it cool. was uh hard to watch not in a yeah. not in a he didn't do it well way but just the material they gave him yeah. I, I felt like oh like he deserved better you mean no just uh i'm like towing the line of spoilers yeah. right now it i keep going back heavy, and forth yeah it was saying. really really heavy yeah. okay so uh, so it's good you actually really i liked really it. liked it i liked his stuff i thought uh, that ruby rose actually did a really good job in this scene too uh com- yeah comparatively to what it could have been mm. uh and <laughs> melissa benoist for the win always yo she is so good she is the perfect supergirl. she needs to bust out of that once and for all yeah. she's so good she's so she good. should be feature film they should have they make stuff. a movie with her yeah, uh, that's well, not they, Supergirl. There's a there's a Supergirl movie in development still, yeah. but not with her, or we don't know. No, not with her. No. Okay. I think she needs to bench, just bust out. There's no reason she shouldn't be leading horror films or leading all these other things. But she's always a star. such a good she's actress. She's a star. Yeah. She's really great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I like this episode better. I'm glad that you're liking it too, mm-hmm. and I'm excited for tonight's episode, which will round out the December crisis stuff uh, it was interesting to me that black lightning aired last night as well yeah Did you see i didn't watch it but it it's, it's weird that it's running parallel with the it's like crisis. comic books right sometimes the yeah. certain certain <laughs> uh lines would keep going even though there was an overall arcing story yeah. happening you just had to collect certain episodes or certain issues of it you know and other titles just kept going so yeah totally they have their stories to tell let's stick on the dc train and talk a little patty jenkins right now what's going on mark uh so patty jenkins you know as we know we we got wonder woman 1984 they were at the brazil comic con and she did in an interview say that they've already figured out the story for wonder woman 3 it kind of came to them in the development of wonder woman 1984 however we might not get it for quite some time um, okay. She's kind and of alluding to that they're going to take their time on one, on Wonder Woman three, and it could be anywhere between no, more than two years. But she didn't really kind of land on a time between the movies. So longer time spent on a movie is good. Yeah, Cody. I think so. I, so, but she is for sure going to direct the third one. I mean, she's hinting at it. Yeah, okay. she's saying that they have an idea. Um, 
that she doesn't want to do back to back filming like she felt like she walked she went right into as you know she did Wonder Woman and then there was a little bit of time for her to negotiate to come back for this because I think she was only contracted for one movie. So now she I think she might have been signed on for two but she's she's really saying I'm not doing back to back like I did with this. So but it's very simple. She has Wonder Woman 3 story. She uh, she's not really going into details and that the only detail we really do is going to take its time to get there. So she's not saying not two years, which was back to back for her, but that it's going to be longer. So we might see a three, four year period between Wonder Woman, movies, which is what we'll be seeing between Aquaman movies. Right. Four year period. I remember when she was doing press for <laughs> like you like the my man. I just can't I remember, not do it. I'm I know, sorry. I, know. I can't. I remember when she was doing, when Patty Jenkins was doing press for Wonder Woman, the first movie, she talked about having the story for the second movie. Yeah. This right. is smart, which is doing. Yeah. She does this. She does this. And also, I think probably most people who work on franchise films start thinking about what the next movie could look like. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's a trilogy and you need to wrap it up, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't know that it would be a trilogy. I wonder if Wonder Woman does... Four movies, right. five movies, yeah, three movies. Two, I I don't hey, know how many Batman movies do we have? Why not? But I, we I, have a lot of Batman exactly. movies. I correct. don't. I just don't know that DC is even having those conversations right, right now because I think that they're just thinking about making successful films, and I think they're going to see if Wonder Woman two is great and Patty Jenkins knocks a second one out of the park. Obviously, they're going to invite her back to do the third one. Mm -hmm. And if that's great, then they're going to ask her to do a fourth one. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is why this is brilliant marketing by her. You said she did it after the second one so that fans are like, oh, what's the third? What's 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 episode two? What's or what's the third one? And then Warner Brothers in a position where she can negotiate with a little bit of leverage here. It's smart. All around, it's smart. Because yeah. I don't think most, because it was never announced as a trilogy. No. no. She just has ideas. And so she did it after the first one. She's doing it after the second one. This is following the pattern. So she gets set up. I think it's very smart business, uh, businessman, mm-hmm. businesswoman thing to do for her. I, I love your thinking on that, Roka, too. Because, the same, yeah, I could agree more. Because you get people that want to know the next movie. They go in droves to see this one. Yeah. So that maybe it's like I don't know if 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 it ends on like a cliffhanger like in the middle movies like they'll do with um, mm-hmm. you know Empire, then it's like oh it's the Empire Strikes Back of whatever movie right. so I don't know if she has that plan but if you get people coming in droves to see this thing it makes over a billion dollars Warner Brothers is on the other end going she has an idea for the third one oh, fuck we're gonna have, <laughs> great we're gonna have to go back to the, to to the negotiating table and good <clears throat> on Patty Jenkins for yeah because she wasn't signed for the second one mm-hmm. after the first one came out no they had to negotiate that and she took a while negotiating yeah. that which she should because yes. she probably was not making that much money on the first one and is probably making a boat ton of money yep. on the second one also especially after what happened with Joker because that's yes right also I think that what we've seen in the press at least and what I what I hear behind the scenes, Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot are very close. Oh, yeah. So I'm Gal-Gadot. sure that she talked to her, and Patty was like, "Yo, Gal, uh, w- timeline wise, you're the a hot ticket right now. What do you want to do? What do we want to work on?" And I'm sure that they kind of came to a scheduling agreement of like, "I need a second of a break. I uh, different projects, whatever for both of them." Uh, and so I think that this is smart. Um, I, I don't mind waiting four years for a great movie. I completely agree, always. Yeah. And I also, again, I don't care if things are connected. I just want to see a good movie. Mm. But um, Dan V900 would like me and Mark to know that us not watching Crisis makes us out to be hypocrites and liars. So, oh, what? Wow. So just thought you should know. Yeah. Well, okay, I, I don't think it makes very, you. Uh, <laughs> about what? Just very to break amazing. It, down, uh, yeah. it doesn't make you hypocrites and liars. It makes you a hypocrite and you a liar. Right. I think mm-hmm. they were trying to say, like, you're the hypocrite right, right. and he's a liar. Yeah, which makes sense. Uh, That's our yeah. brand. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, You don't want to pile hip- it on. You're not both a liar. hypocrite and liar, so right. don't feel that bad about yourself. <laughs> just yeah. the one thing. Yeah, just yeah. the one. Right. So you I guys really... are acquaintances, <laughs> liar, hypocrite. I'm really sorry about <laughs> yes. loving Superman as much as I do and not watching Crisis. Yes. I will get to it. How dare you? You are no longer a true Superman fan, There, Mark. There it is. I, Fucking I lied. liar. I lied by saying I love Superman, yet not they, watching Crisis. They haven't made it easy for you guys to watch it. Yeah. Like, it's been eight years of uh, more than a half Look, dozen shows. I did yeah. watch like some it, of it. I definitely well, was looking forward to it. I just, here's the thing just about the show. You're a hypocrite. Yeah, exactly. And just a, a liar. And liar. But no, yeah. this is the thing. I watched the Kevin Conroy scene. Yeah. I watched the Tim Burton stuff. Like, I, the, I think that that's great that these shows exist. They are just not for me. They mm-hmm. are. They, I feel it makes me feel like I'm watching a '90s TV show, which is fine. But I just, how do if I, I know had, if you're lying? Well, you don't. Mm. 
You never mm. know. That's right. <laughs> Guys, what if the lie is that she actually is watching? Yeah. What exactly. A twist. What a what twist. A twist. <laughs> Let's stay in this DC camp, guys, because we got more DC news, and this is a big one. I have a feeling the internet has feels on this. Birds of Prey, Riley, what's up? What's up? Yeah, so this one got me. I, this is a, an interesting thing. When we're talking about the Wonder Woman stuff, and we're talking about Aquaman, all these things, and what are, like, do we need all of it connected somehow in the DCEU? Like, they, that's where they were going, right? Everything was connected. Now it seems with Joker and everything, they're just trying to make good movies. Mm-hmm. That's what you said that, Doreen, right? So uh, our own Haley Fouch was doing the set visit for Birds of Prey. And they t- <laughs> Thank you. I was waiting for that. And so when they asked director Kathy Yon <laughs> what specific amount of time passed since we saw Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad last, she said something very interesting. She said, there's not any known amount of time. No, kind of exists in a parallel timeline. And that's all she said. They didn't really go into it more than that. But when she says parallel timeline, that this Harley could be, what, can, disconnected from Suicide Squad, events of Suicide Squad, yeah. okay. which is then disconnected because Batman is in that, mm-hmm. disconnected from Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Justice League, and what have you. What does this mean? So, so just to, this, this... It's, if I'm understanding correctly, this is to keep the story specifically for Birds of Prey, the movie, separate from every other movie. Possibly, but let's talk about what DC means when they talk about timelines or multiverse uh-huh. or Cause... Earths because it is very confusing and as somebody who is a DC comic book reader, right. movie watcher, TV watcher, I'm still slightly I know you guys love when I say I'm confused. <laughs> I'm still slightly confused. Are you confused? Same. I'm just like, sometimes it's just really confusing for my just, little head. It's just so confusing. And I don't know how it gets under my blonde hair, but it just gets stuck in there, so it gets hard to get out the information That's what she sometimes. Said, yeah. um, <laughs> but here's what I gather. Here's what I gather from the um, specific phrase parallel timeline. This is not parallel Earth. This is not a different Earth. Parallel timeline would be more like a, a flashpoint type situation mm-hmm. where we are um, living in a d- different timeline, same Earth. But I don't know if that's mm. what you gather from that phrase, John. Well, she's an unreliable narrator. So mm. the parallel timeline makes sense because who knows how much of any of this is going to be the truth that we're watching. So she has a right to create her own timeline. So you think it's not an actual phrase like parallel timeline? Everybody's living in, on this earth on yes. a parallel timeline. You think it's more of a Harley's parallel? Yes, because uh, did, you, did you think like that, that with Joker? Did you think he was an unreliable no, narrator because, watching it, or no? Because some think people think that. Well, so. because I don't think he's telling a story. Okay. There are shots. Okay. There are sequences where he's not involved. Okay. So I don't think it's the same thing. But, but Todd case, said it was a not connected. So okay. to me, I just dismissed it as that. Okay. But with this. this this feels because if you Haley also talked about the first five minutes of the film, which they show down in Brazil, and she is narrating from the beginning what she has done and what mm-hmm. she's doing, what's changed, breaking up with a Joker, ramming her car into Axis Chemicals, and blowing up the whole chemical plant to kind of be a separation from the Joker. We don't know how much of that is really true and not true. And Harley Quinn is insane. So. Though, so how much of what we're watching is the actual truth of what's happening? Mm-hmm. We don't know. If she's our guide through all of it, and her name is in the title, then I don't know how much of it we can take as canon or right. as gospel. And she so, obviously must have titled her own story, too, because mm-hmm. the only right. reason the that they had a one, fabulous emancipation of one Harley right. Quinn is, mm-hmm. like, this is her story, yeah. and I'm writing it. And I love that. And I, and I got it that it was connected to Suicide Squad with that title because of her relationship with Joker in that movie, and that this is her like Mm -hmm. breaking free of that and having this but to your point john here's the quote harley is the narrator of the story very unreliable erratic narrator which is fun robbie said but also gives i think the audience an opportunity to kind of be inside her brain sometimes and see the world through her eyes so i love the idea that it's parallel that it might be a not faux timeline but she's making it up she's she's this is her world is she crazy is she having problems is this like is the movie gonna be like a a kind of us us viewing her brain it is interesting because i don't maybe maybe these are the words maybe these are the words that kathy ann said uh and i'm putting too much weight in them but she didn't say alternate timeline right she did say parallel Mm -hmm. so Maybe what she's actually alluding to is that while other things are going on in D.C., 
this is simultaneously going on yeah, with Harley. Sure. Could and it be. could be as simple as that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, I, this doesn't bother me. I saw some people on the internet saying this is their way to tell whatever story they want and then kind of retcon everything else and have it going back to normal. If that is the case, I'm still fine with it because yeah. make a good movie. Tell me whatever story you want to tell. That's the benefit of being with the DC, that you can do that, mm -hmm. that we can have all these different pockets and timelines and Earths and characters that are the same in the TV and the movies mm -hmm. and different actors playing them. That's why it all does work. But I don't actually think that's what they're saying. I don't think that this is we're receiving a different Harley than Suicide Squad's Harley. Mm, and this no. is like Earth 5 Harley right, as opposed right. to Earth 38 right, right. Harley. And this is her parallel story. Well, and here's a newsflash. This happens in the comics all the time. Uh, Brian Nazarello's Joker, which is one of the best. So good. Uh, so, right, one. right? Yeah. Beautiful None art. of that leads into overall canon of anything. It was just this guy having one night with the Joker and what his experience was like through his eyes. So it's one story. It happens all the time in comics. Why wouldn't it happen in the movies? I know people say, oh, cop out, cop out. No, just let's have a good movie. And what needs to connect will connect. And what doesn't, what doesn't. And who cares? We enjoyed ourselves in the theater. Yeah. yeah. I, go Yo, ahead. Sorry. Then we're Roxy, with your point. It's like I when I read this, I was like, it's going to be interesting for the fans that, like, do we need it all to be connected? Or can we just go to what you're literally right, saying, right. which is comic book movies? Mm -hmm. They can exist just one shot. Yeah. And so it's a movie. And if it does well, we can then get a sequel or, or continue that story. But connecting to the bigger picture that all these movies have to be connected, we see the Joker is not the case. And it did very well. So it's up to the audience. Do you care? I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Just then, if you want to see a good movie, go see your movie. Yep. And you sh and you should care because it happens in the comics all the time. It happens <laughs> so, in the comics all the time. That's why you have different authors and different timelines mm -hmm. and yeah. Talking so. comics, let's cross the pond for a second because there's also some Marvel news this week. Um, mm. Mark, what's going on with the Eternals? Well, so the Eternals, um, in in an interview that Kevin Feige did speaking to Omelet, he did say that the Eternals will take place over seven thousand years as the characters go through different time periods. Wow. Um, to that's, show, how, that's how long they're going to be making Marvel movies for. That's probably how long, yeah. but um, which makes sense for a movie called Eternals. Yeah. And, get uh, it? And get it? <laughs> They've been around for eternity? Okay. And that they're also going to You're introduce... You're that one, really? Yeah. <laughs> Cody's got my... He's got my back. It started strong, but then. Um, but that that it's also uh, going to um, connect and reveal, introduce the deviants, which mm. is the other version of um, the Eternals. Or, or does anybody know much about the deviants? Yo, I don't know jack shit yeah, about the I'm Eternals not, this or is the like deviants or what's happening here. But I'm long for the ride because yeah. Marvel's proven to me. But I, this is not my world. Mm. I do not know. I this do not one know. I'm very confused about as well. But. Uh, it does say here there's a big, long – if you go to Collider.com, there's a great article that breaks down this. But this is the Eternals have in general protected the human race from the Deviants with whom they've always had uh, a, basically a, a war between the two. So we're going to get that introdu uh, introduction. But making sense that it's 7,000 years so you can cross into other areas of the MCU maybe. But I think that's more like – way back in history, way back before Captain Marvel, which is the only prequel we have in the MCU. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how they connect it. John, while you drink your water. Here's my issue. What's oh, that? Shit. Oh, I've, shit. I've always hated the Deviants. Like Why? the name. Oh, okay. The Eternals is awesome. That's uh -huh. a... Badass. You name. hate them as in like they're 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 horrible people, or no. you hate them as in like you don't care about their story. I, I thought it was a terrible name. Okay. And that Why? is always because the deviants. It seems so small compared to the Eternals, right? There should be. Well, something. that's what they're going for here. Right. They're but uh, but genetically like, unstable and monstrously grotesque. Yes, but they the go deviants. toe to toe with right. the Eternals. All right, so but isn't have Thanos a, larger, a deviant? Huh? Thanos yeah, is technically Thanos a deviant. Is a, in I the thought, comics, he's no? a mad titan, okay. which is a version. Of, yeah, he's like connected. Can in you that way. do me a favor and rename them? Decepticons. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. poke holes in something Star you can't screen. plug. <laughs> oh, hey. Good point. Good point. She should have gone to Dinko. Uh, mm, I'm just go. voicing that I've always disliked. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying, Darina. How do you feel about all this? I don't really care. Uh, I'm gonna go <laughs> see them anyways. I, I mean, I'll, I'll watch them. The, the cast uh -huh. looks cool. Um, I, I think it'll it could be like Guardians where there's a lot of people out there that are not comic book readers that that yeah. might like it be if they do a good job with presenting all the characters or it, I don't think it's going to flop yeah. with, the, with the cast that they have, right? Yeah. 
Sounds like none of us really care. A story you guys definitely do care about, though, that I want to touch upon before we open up those phone mm. lines. Please. We're talking horror, baby. Hey, let's hear some Conjuring news. Okay, so we did get the Conjuring 3 title, and we surprised the hell out of this horror-loving guy when we went into an actual, it's called The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. And it's actually- That's my a, biopic. Yeah, it's going to be your mm-hmm. biopic. Um, and it's, all, it's based on an actual court case where somebody Ooh. murdered somebody and said the devil made me do it, so it's actually gonna have supernatural elements, but how it actually can lead into some of these cases that you know me as the true crime lover that we've heard, yeah. you know, Son Crazy. of Sam, the dog made me do it. You know, these are things that um, are really interesting that are out there about the human psyche and how can it be supernatural? Is it all in your head? You can walk that line and whether or not you believe somebody like the Warrens are going to come in and investigate this right. case and it's an actual case. So this is probably the best thing that can happen for the Conjuring universe for I this agree. guy, for this horror movie guy, because it actually goes into and walks that line of real, in your head, mental illness, supernatural, what have you. And I think it's a great way to do a third movie where the second one you know, you start introducing the crooked man and then you get this other one. It's like, how many ghosts are there? This just seems a little bit more grounded in reality, which I like, which is more scary for me. I completely agree. Do we know who he, who's involved yet? Well, James Wan is producing. Um, let me look. Uh, talk not, about yourself directing, while I look. Not directing, just producing? He's not directing this time. I'm trying to find. I can't I mean, remember. I think that <laughs> did uh, Curse of La Llorona. Oh, that, that director did? Directing. Okay. I think. Yeah, Not yeah. Hold on, know. let me find out. You you think. Think. Darina, you said you're Coast. excited. Yeah, no, I actually, The Conjuring is one of the recent horror trilogy, or I guess you know, it's now it's going to be a trilogy franchises. Yeah, that I really like. Uh, that I grew up being scared of The Exorcist and anything to do with demonic possession, that type of stuff. I don't believe in it, but it's kind of <laughs> cool, you know, to think that it might happen. It's weird so, that you're afraid because that's because that's family. What, yeah. yeah, that's your life. Well, no, I I, 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 I just think that there's always been a demon inside me, and so you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I, I think that the first. Are you are you okay there, Roka? Are okay. you telling me you don't believe in demonic possession? You're Latina and you don't well, believe I, in Well, somebody no. called me a liar in the chat, so how do you know? You are I'm a liar and a right hypocrite. Right <laughs> huh, John? <laughs> Wait, can you explain to me what that just means? What do you mean? It's so deep in our culture. Oh, yeah. completely. The demonic, demonic possession, possession thing. What yeah. does that mean? That's yeah. why The Exorcist was like banned from like mm-hmm. theaters and shit but like what that. Is, what does that mean? You, like you guys believe that the de- devil can possess you? Like yes. if somebody says they murdered somebody because of the devil, you would you could believe that? Mm, I don't know about that, but I think the, uh, the idea of being possessed by the devil and the demonic possession, what that looks like, and actually, like you said, exorcist. You believe whoever, in that? Yes. Well, it's whether you believe it. But you, you say it's bu- entrenched in your culture. Yeah. But right? you it's, personally it's, believe that it could happen. Yes. So, because you are religious. Yes. Okay. See, because I'm not religious anymore. So, I do right? you believe it could no, happen? I no. See. No. I mean, well, now I'm more <coughs> of like like a hippie where I could believe anything can happen, right? But I haven't seen it, so until I've seen it, then right. I don't I don't believe in it, if that makes sense. But I but I do I did believe in it as a kid, mm-hmm. and I feel like the Conjuring movies uh, did a really good job of like actually making people like me that are now atheists scared. Like I mm-hmm. think that, that this, and it could be just because of the cast as well. It's it's shot really well, but this is a good take on it. Like Riley said, because people are really into murder documentaries yeah. right now, which I think is more horrifying than horror movies because that that shit actually happens. So I think it's a really smart angle. A Snyder's whole desk is murder. Exactly. Oh yeah, documentary book document. He just loves those serial killer books. He's look, because people people. I mean, look at why the Joker was so successful, yeah, right? People like Mindhunter. Hunter. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but to Cody, you were right. Michael Chavez, who did the Curse of Yada, Yad, uh, how do you say it? Yada Yorona. La Llorona. I can't. La I can't. So Chavez y Chavez. Chavez y Chavez. He is directing. It's only a Y sound if there's two L's together, right? La Llorona. You know what's getting me? The Yor with the L L. Yor Llorona. The Llorona. 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 Yeah. Rolling the that. You sound so white. <laughs> Roxy, I I'm the first to call myself out. Yeah. I'm the whitest guy in the room. Yeah. All but, right, like, and I. He'll embrace it, and I will say Yadalona da Blana, and I will say Mark Maroney, and I will say, say whatever the fuck again. I want. Say Whoa. the first thing again. Say the, say the title of the movie again. Let's La Yarona. That was the best you did so far. That's pretty good. She's like, think about Cody, it. Cody, you do it. Nope. 
<laughs> Come on. I know the trap you guys are laying here. Yeah, I know. Uh, Come on, you did it on the wingers. In the room, you play the game. That's right. In the room, you play the game. I'm not in, in the, the room, room, so I don't play have to play. Game. <laughs> oh. He sang, so I'll give it to him. All right, I'm glad that you guys are fans of this. Let's open up the phone lines and let's uh, Ooh, like take that. some calls and see how they're feeling about La Llorona and also hey. how they're feeling about Patty Jenkins, uh, or as Darina Sexley will say, also Patty Jenkins. Yes. There's, there's no sexy word for that. Uh, Eternals, Buffy. Birds of Prey, if you agree with Elijah Wood, if you want Hateless. That Doreen and I are liars things. and hypocrites. Also tell us what questions you have for Joey Ryan and <laughs> his penis. Call her, you're on Clyde Alive. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Uh, hello, you're on Clyde Alive. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, guys. Sean from Boston. How are you? Hey, Sean. Hell yeah. Bean Town Strong. What's going on? What do you got for us Sorry today? about this weekend. Ha <laughs> JK. I'm not sorry. Oh, my God. Suck my dick, Dorina. <laughs> wow. I right. will. Hey, so back to the crisis stuff. Um, so kind of spoilery about Black Lightning last night. Can I speak freely? I haven't seen it yet, but yeah, sure. Why not? All right. Anyway, I just want to say that um, I was surprised, too, that, you know, the episode was going to air, but they had a cool crisis tie-in at the end, so it all matters. Oh. Ah. oh, cool. I'm oh, excited there. for that, then. I'm, okay. I'm excited to watch that. I'll definitely like I'll check it out by tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow I'll have seen the third part of Crisis and Black Lightning, and then I'll, I'll give a little review then. Mm. Sean, anything else for us today? Right on. No, that's it. Digging the show. Good stuff, guys. Thank you. Thank really you, appreciate Sean. Thanks, Sean. Boston strong forever, baby. He's the nicest Boston guy I've ever heard in my entire freaking life. Mm. He's definitely either a transplant or lives outside. He's like city. way out. Yeah, yeah, way out. Did you There's... see what happened with what's her face? Uh, Mahomes' girlfriend? Mm-mm. Like they had to move her out of the state, out of into a safe spot in the stadium. She was tweeting all through the game how the Patriots fans were coming after, her, calling not, all kinds I'm of not, names. I'm not surprised. Okay. I'm, I, I'm not saying that we should. I'm, I'm saying That's I'm not surprised. I mean, I've watched it happen. I told you guys when I was at uh, when I was at the Garden and we were playing the Lakers, and yeah. I watched two grown men spit on these two young women who were walking by oh, that were in Lakers jerseys. Like Boston fans are the, the best and the worst of them. God, I wish I'd been there. Knocked yeah, out. and yeah. it's brutal. I agree. I Caller on Collider out. Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is a G from Glendale once again. G, hey, G. G. I'm calling in. G, so happy you're calling in. I actually almost wore one of the shirts that you gave me today, but I'll be wearing it uh, in the next couple of weeks for sure. And I told Snyder to bring oh. in the bag for Darina today, but I haven't seen. I heard oh, I tomorrow. got a he bag from you, oh, G. Thank you. That's awesome. I can't yeah, wait to welcome. see it. I, sad, sad. Uh, I missed you at the spectacular, but I think you'll enjoy it. There's a lot of uh, red. For you know your evilness and uh, blood. definitely a, a, a demon, a demon-like shirt in there. Sweet. Jay, hey, what do you have for us today? Uh, I'm just, I just wanted to uh, um, just say it was super dope meeting meeting y'all at, uh, on that last Saturday, and I just honestly I just wanted to ask if uh, Darina did receive the package, but I know she's gonna be having it now. So. Glad you guys enjoyed uh, loving this new 2.0. Sorry, G, thanks for like, calling. Thanks, G. Oh, at the gym. See, it sounds like yeah, he's at a racetrack. <laughs> race That's kind of like the gym. You know, hear the cars? Yeah. Betting on the ponies. Thanks, G. Thanks, Appreciate guys. the call. Then the shirts. <laughs> G was great. He came with these uh, backpacks for me and D nice. uh, there that are filled to the brim of That's cool so swag. Nice. Yeah, it was really cool. Really That's cool. Swag. I like presents. A lot of people were looking for you at Spectacular, but you didn't show know, up because you were sick. And this is what happens when people don't feel like they can show up when they're sick. I showed up when I was sick. Yeah, but you had to. I didn't. Are we allowed to say so that? So why would No. <laughs> I was sick. Yeah, but you were you getting... You were sick. You're saying I showed up today. Oh. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That's what we meant. Yeah. 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 Cody, yeah. Cody, quick, mm-hmm. force a caller in. Quick, Cody, quick. Not right now, Derek. All right. What is that noise? Caller, oh. you're on Clyde Alive. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Kevin from New York. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, happy to have you here. What do you got for us today? Uh, So first, just to keep going on the crisis talk, Just, I just want to say I, I'm digging all the love being shown to Kingdom Come between... Crisis and the Wonder Woman trailer. Yep, has been awesome. Um, I just want to give that shout. But then, this is my actual question, and I always kind of like doing this with my friends. So, and because you guys kind of talked about like a week or two ago, like if you had a five, if you had a chance to, if for like a, to give a quick like five minute pitch for like your dream Star Wars movie with a director, just who would you choose? Because I know who I, what I would do. Mm. What would you do? Um. 
a Republic Commando film because I think that's like a very underrated game and just kind of what was done in that was really cool within the Star Wars universe is very dark, gritty military type, like like proper dark, even darker than like Rogue One and mm. uh, directed by Catherine Bigelow. Aha. Uh-huh. A little Zero Dark Thirty in there. I like yeah. it. Thank you for the call and the pitch. Anybody got one? Yep. All right, what do you got? Denis Villeneuve directs. Yes. It is uh, centering on the, the birth of the Jedi, the first Jedi, if you will, but it really goes into the religion and the idea of the Force and that could it be that when the Force is discovered and that there become Jedi, that there are the people out there like a Han Solo that don't believe in that mumbo jumbo, Mm -hmm. you know, that they only believe in a good blaster at your side. I think Denis Villeneuve can go into the heady kind of debate between what is the force and if it is real and whether or not there is a belief system that you need to adopt to use the force. Mm -hmm. And it is about religion versus atheism. And it, 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 it can be something about that and whether or not you believe, like trust your instincts, mm-hmm. a bigger power is out there and that there is a universe full of people that don't believe that that power exists and that one person steps forward and becomes the Jedi and then that births the Jedi order. Oh, yeah, so nice. no midi-chlorians is what you're saying. No midi-chlorians, <laughs> no. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. 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 Roku, you got anything? Uh, all right, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Um, not a movie, TV show. Either she does the Leia prequel or the Asajj Ventress story with Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Ooh. Now that she's done what she's done. Asajj Ventress. Like that. You know, yeah. being part of Solo, being part of Bond now. Did you say a, a Leia prequel? Yeah. Do you Where we ca- see her dream like. casting? Ooh. You're always putting me on the spot, Mark. That's my job. Rena Riley wrote I don't Roxy. Know. I don't know if anybody... I mean, Thomas well, and McKenzie is my thought, but I don't think she fits uh, physically or facially. But what about of her Jojo Rabbit? John Cena, yeah, definitely. Well, of course, John always. Cena, yeah. John Cena would be the best Assassin's yeah. interest. I finally saw a train wreck John for the Cena. first time over the weekend. Excellent, right? My, it's my girlfriend's so favorite funny. film, it's apparently. Excellent. It's Isn't so great. it so Cena good? Cena is a genius in that. Yeah, so he's funny. great. He's great. Him trying to talk dirty is one of the funniest things ever in my life. Agreed. <laughs> Rena, <laughs> Roxy. Um, I've always wanted to see, uh, when I was a kid, I read the Timothy Zahn books. So yeah. I wanted. I, I think it'd be cool to see just one movie of Luke actually turning to the dark side and uh, directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Yeah, he's he's oh, yeah. yeah. You will turn to the dark side now. I like <laughs> Did you read Dark, dark Empire, though? <laughs> what? I mean, yeah, it, 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 Timothy Zahn books, I forget. Did Luke Shadow go to the dark the side? Shadow, Shadow of the Empire, Empire is, yeah. is the comic series. Right, so yeah. So then, the Mind's Eye, isn't that the other one? That's the one that took place after yeah, him and Leia. New, New Hope, yeah. yeah. Uh, caller, yeah. you are on Collider Live. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is uh, Jacoby from Dallas, Texas. Jacoby, thanks for calling in. What do you got for us today? Yeah, first thing I wanted to say, Riley, I really love your idea. Thanks, uh, man. I absolutely love Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's going to be great. <clears throat> and uh, it's your question. Since we're talking about DC stuff, uh, uh, I think yesterday as well, and today. Um, I've always kind of hated the uh, uh, Man of Steel, and I'm sorry, I know that's uh, controversial. Mm. Uh, I topic, love but I hated you. Man of Steel. I love uh, you. Uh, Jesus. Primarily because of the fact that, um, like, mm. Superman is supposed to be this idea of, of um, like, He's supposed to be the pinnacle of American ideals. But he wasn't Superman sure. yet. Well, he wasn't Superman, Superman yet. You, you guys, okay. all of, all of okay. you, <laughs> SMD, let our guests talk. <laughs> We're so happy to have sorry, you here, Kobe. Yeah. You rock. Sorry, man. No, it's all right. Sorry, it's all right. sorry. We're, just We're triggered. Sorry. I'm triggered. I, I am not triggered, I and I love you. I with my buddies all the time. It's so <laughs> no, I am uh, on your team. Never forget that. Keep going. Let's like, let her me, handle. To me, there's a reason why Red Sun works, and Red Sun works because it is imagining, um, imagining Superman if he was not like this pinnacle of the American ideal, but throughout the entirety of man of steel, I feel as though Snyder was more trying to make a, um, uh, a Superman, which is about Ayn Rand's objectivism and kind of working for himself and and, and thinking about his own ideals Mm -hmm. instead of those of the rest of the nation and Mm -hmm. kind of the culture he belongs in. And so my question was what, uh, historical, uh, I guess historical. What cultural character, comic book or otherwise, do you think, as they've been updated to the modern age, they've kind of lost touch with their um, 
origin of what they're really about. Thank you so much for calling mm. in. Great call. That That's was what great. I was talking Good about call. with Lois Lane earlier. I think she worked as an earlier character, and I don't think that she works anymore. Um, I think she. I don't think she has been updated. The, the way that she's been updated makes her seem like at the time she was a strong woman. The way that she's depicted now, she's not depicted as as strong. I get wow. it. I, get it. I didn't no, need a sorry. mic drop. Hello? No, no, no. You were good. I <laughs> think, no, we, we agree. Go? I think that, well, I think we're, well, everybody's we're, we're, we're thinking all, of their own. We're right all now. triggered of, about the Man of Steel. Yeah, I don't understand what you're saying. You don't understand? What? You Wait. don't think Lois Lane is... Um, She's super independent. Does her own thing. Doesn't need Superman for at, shit. Or, did you watch? Did you see any of BBS? Yeah. Oh, BBS... I thought Man of Steel how, was different how? than BBS. Man of Steel, she does. Yeah, Man thing. of Steel, yeah, she, she, she was the damn a badass. Yeah. But, but, Man of Steel a little they, more, but BBS, yeah. help, 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 help. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, but except, she goes and takes the bullet and investigates? Except if you see the, the Ultimate Edition is different. Right? I because, have seen it, because, obviously. But like Lewis and Clark are both in the movie more, and yeah. they're not in the theatrical release. right? But I get what you're saying. She is different than in Man of Steel, for sure. I right. think my favorite I, Amy Adam Lewis line is, is Man of Steel. We don't get to see her investigative skills the way that I want to. She often right. needs his help. It, it was kind of cool in Crisis, actually, when mm. he's uh, – uh, Never mind, that was not that, and I, I won't say what I'm talking about right now because I realize it's a spoiler for a show that nobody's seen yet. Uh, there was a cool thing with Lois Lane at some point in life. Darina, you go. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I, I love what the caller said. Uh, I actually do agree with the the way Zack Snyder was probably trying to portray Superman, but I still think that it was Clark or Kal-El trying to figure out who he is and yeah. trying to figure out and becoming Superman. So those two things can actually be intertwined. Like I, I agree with him, but I did like that part of the movie, yeah. right? So, uh, but on that note, I think Batman, Bat, Batman. It's it's weird. You don't that, think he's been updated with the time? No, I just think that it's it's interesting to see how much he's changed because I think that. In the '80s, with with Frank Miller's uh, comic books, like we got the t- because of him, we got the Tim Burton mo- uh, movies, we got the Nolan universe mm. as well. And I feel like, are we kind of now? Do we? I, I think it's time. It's time for the character to be updated, right? Because we have seen the same Batman since for what, like over a decade now. Mm-hmm. So I think. So, do you guys not agree? I think that that character still works with the times. Like, yeah. I, that well, he's this affluent dude who, I, I mean, his backstory, I mean, I think everything still works. But what what do you think of this? Because there was a big hullabaloo when Batman killed in BBS. That even got, though he's killed before. Yeah. Even though he's killed before in some comic iterations, some people thought that that was against his character and had a big problem with that movie. And so would would the caller's question go to your point with Batman do we need to get away from that, or is he more? Is it more consistent with his character to kill in today's society because it depends, that's his because vengeance the Bat Flick, and his justice? But it depends because Batflick is very different than like the Kevin Conroy animated series Batman, right? right? Like right. so that's that's the point I'm trying to make. It's like you have those two, which it, it's more of a preference then. But mm-hmm. I think they they both make sense for our current society. Well, so, and, and, be, and Batman is created within whatever construct you put him in, right? Mm-hmm. He's not going to kill in the animated series, right? But he'll kill in the Snyder version. He's killed in the Tim Burton version. Certainly, Batman Returns. There are a number of deaths. Dark Knight Rises. Uh, Dark oh yeah. Man, Dark I mean, uh, uh, sorry, Dark Knight Returns. Burn Returns. Right. That you see a number of deaths. So it's just it's just a matter of well, where do you put him in? And the truth is this, and people crow about this all the time. Who are and I'm a comic, so you can come at me if you like. But Batman doesn't kill his villains because it doesn't make sense for the story. It's not about some kind of moral code or ethics code. It's because you'd lose that damn storyline. So you don't kill the villains, but he will kill people around him, the lesser of the henchmen, sure. But there's not some kind of mantra that Batman will never kill. Like Superman. Riley, what like mo- Superman. What movie are you talking about? Batman v Superman. Uh, no, what was the one you said was... Dark Knight Rises? No, no I, I... Returns? Dark Knight? Dark Knight Returns, the comic book. I accidentally oh, yeah, right, said right, okay, Dark okay. Knight Rises. Rises. I get it. I not, get it not the Nolan, because he, he made a point to say... We don't, don't, have, no kill, right, we don't right. have much time before we go to commercial, yeah. but I want to know if you guys have answers to the question. I mean, I'm, I'm along his line of thinking that I think Hollywood right now doesn't understand Superman. There's a there's a way to do it. He's jumping off of Man of Steel as his point, yeah. but I love to your... To, to, the three of us here that like Man of Steel, we got that story. Now I think the Superman that I want to see that sure. the audiences don't haven't seen that are wishing to yeah. see um, the filmmakers Hollywood. I don't think they understand him. And Just I think they, go back Morrison to the basics. Help you write the script. John, John, that the greatest example of that is Green Lantern. They completely messed up that whole Green Lantern origin. 
That was yeah, that's, that a, is, that's a good uh, pick. That's not Hal Jordan at all. That's Wally West as Green Lantern. That is not Hal Jordan mm. as Green Lantern. Wally West is Wally, a wisecracking Wally young... Wally West? Yeah, the Flash, the blonde, wisecracking young Flash. That's who oh. uh, Ryan Reynolds was playing as Hal Jordan I in, in Green Lantern. So that's where they hmm. betrayed it. That's, to me, the number one example. And Ben Affleck is Daredevil. We'll be going to our guest, Joey Ryan, very soon. But before we do that, I earlier on, Riley, you mentioned your Patreon. And, and I just wanted to say, we I don't think that people know where they can find us outside of this place. So I did want to give a brief plug. Riley, oh. where can people keep up with your Patreon and become uh, fans of yours? Thank you, Roxy. Yeah. Patreon.com forward slash Riley Roundtable. That's Dur- where you can find my stuff. Doreen, I noticed that you are almost at 10,000 followers on Twitter and I want to get us there so badly so that's our new goal for for end of 2019 go follow Darina uh, at Evil Darina at Evil Darina on Twitter and Instagram not on Facebook don't have a Patreon and John I know (laughs) that you have one as well I have 30 what do you mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, you have 30 Patreons? About, all I can talk about is the top 10. I'll talk about top 10 because it's on Collider. And it's on the Collider Live feed, which is this feed. We have been on, we've, we came back a few weeks ago. Come watch us there on camera, Matt and I, and all our shenanigans doing the top 10. And, of course, we're on the Collider Live podcast feed as well. Mm. You get the audio a week before you get the video unless you're a patron. If you're a patron, which is www.patreon.com slash the top 10, number 10 there, Go sign up there, and you get access to the video ahead of time. And, Cody, what about for you? This is just a question people keep asking me. Where can we find you outside? Yeah. So Wangers. I want to make sure. Yeah, the Wangers have a Patreon. Oh, um, good. Oh, wow. Well, I just did it to myself. Yeah. Yes, Cody. Oh, man. Woo. That's being humble. Uh, no, but we have a new <laughs> short film dropping at the end of this week, I believe. So patreon.com slash wangers. Check it out. We're a bunch of busy people. You guys can find me at youtube.com slash Roxy Stryer. Also, you can find me after this break talking to my friend Joey Ryan all about his uh, his dong style. Yeah. Yes, you heard that right. John Roca. Hey everyone, this is John Roca.
Welcome back to Collider Live, guys, with another royalty-free, Cody? There's a lot of good music out there. Uh, what? Where totally are you finding this shit, man? <coughs> Internet's a great place. My friend in the house right now, he does dong style better than anybody else. It's Joey Ryan. Hey. hey. Welcome. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for being here. Darina, you are just asking how we met. Yes, because you guys are actually friends, right? Yeah. We're Well, uh, what's crazy is I've known him for way less time than I've known Roca, but apparently John and I right. aren't friends, but well, Joey and I are. Way there, you You're know. not there yet is what Roca I think we're really close, though. Yeah, But you guys seem to be there, so how did you guys meet? What happened? Uh, So we... I, uh, how, do, how do I even start? So so the Internet's weird. And, yeah. Uh, and... There's uh, you know things on things on YouTube and things uh, things that get popular and things that have a following that you might not expect and one of them is uh, board games which is a big market and uh, board game reviews on YouTube apparently is a thing and wow. uh, we were both uh, hired to he's host. been doing it for a while though like there's this company Draft House remember I went to mm-hmm. Portland and you'd been already working for the company and then I don't know they found Collider Live and they brought me on and we started talking about board games together yeah yeah we just reviewed some we played some games and then reviewed them but when we were doing that I was just so fascinated by Joey's story like I probably asked him 4,000 questions about his penis just in general <laughs> because you guys know me I can't hear something and then not ask like of a course. bajillion follow up questions especially about penises yeah it, Definitely, especially about yeah. penises, but also about wrestling, because you mm-hmm. know I'm on like the outskirts of being. Mm. You're a diehard wrestling sure. fan. Mm-hmm. I'm on the outskirts where a lot of my friends are wrestlers or in the world, but I had never heard of what you do, which is just like the the most mind blowing thing. Take us back, <laughs> like so. I tell everybody you wrestle with your penis. Is that an accurate way of describing what happens? Um, I, I use my penis, yes, when I do wrestle. Um. I don't, yeah, I guess uh, it just depends on you know who you're talking to and who and how they will envision that. Because um, I'm not like wrestling penises, um, you know, like I'm wrestling and using my penis. So um, I, I I was on a um, a YouTube show uh, called Being the Elite, which is uh, the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes. Yeah, they, man. They coined me the famous Dick Wrestler. And that kind of stuck. So that's. Do you not like that, or you? Do? No, no, I do. I okay. do. It's great for T-shirt marketing. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's how you think about everything. Like, it, does this work for my brand and my marketing? It, it's less about what you're actually doing, more like, it, is this going to sell? Is this going to make me have a better career? Yeah, wrestling is just a commercial for my T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it like that, but I just mean I think you've been. <laughs> I think you've been really smart about it. Like, th- what you've picked to be your finisher is something that you could do theoretically forever. Yeah, yeah. It gets creepier the older I get, but mm. is that true? It might get funnier. How yeah. long have you been doing it for now? Um, the first one was in December twenty, or sorry, November twenty fifteen. Yeah. Okay. And, so. and there's been a lot of controversy about it since. John, you were telling me that some of the yeah. people... Yeah, see, I've been a fan of Joey for a, ever since I saw that, and then I saw the shit you took for it yeah. from pro wrestling fans. I was, like, out of my mind about it because the whole premise of, rest, of pro wrestling is not real, and it's fun, and creator, creating characters and crazy moves, and the fact that you came up with something that was taboo for a long time this idea of touching the genitals or the private parts when you're trained for a professional wrestler like you're trained not to hit those parts on purpose Mm -hmm. to use it to turn it around as a finisher i thought was brilliant especially at the time when 
the society was opening up to be more open to the idea of talking about sex and sexuality and all this kind of stuff. It just made sense. So I never understood. And Cornette, some of the old guys, they always go crazy about it. But Joey, to his credit, is always he's always a class act when he's responding to it. Um, yeah, you know, like everybody, everybody, if, if, wrestling fans, wrestling fans always think the wrestling they grew up with is the best. Yeah. And that everything has called the gone downhill since. So anything that's changing or different, they don't like and they resist, especially the older guard. Yeah. You had a, a wrestler in Japan who pitched this to you, right? Yes. Yeah. It was, I, it wasn't even my idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I stood on the shoulders of giants. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I was wrestling in Japan for DDT Pro Wrestling, um, and I was wrestling a character who, and like the political correctness in Japan's a little bit different, mm -hmm. so he plays a gay character, but he's very over the top about it, and one of the things he does is he uh, grabs his opponents by the gen by the junk, and uh, when they're freaking out, why he like flips them or suplexes them or throws them, um, but he wrestles Japanese wrestlers all the time, so he, he pitched to me when we, the first time we wrestled in his broken English, he says, uh, maybe I grab, but maybe you no sell, meaning I don't. I don't react uh, because American cock is so big and so strong. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> about American cock. Did you think about saying no? Like I don't want to do that because what the hell is that? Or were you like, yeah, for sure, let's do that. Where my cock is big and strong. <laughs> yeah, you know the guy who you know, I was wrestling. He's pretty popular in Japan, and uh, you know he he's. He's got. He's very creative um, with with his wrestling. So I trusted his instinct, and then, um, you know, he came up with the idea where where I would instead turn him and flip him with it rather than him flipping me by it. So and then, I, when I watch, I'm pretty self critical when I watch my stuff, mm -hmm. and um, and I watched that match back, and uh, you know, I, I laughed at that part. So um, I thought, okay, screw it, I'll cut that 27 seconds out and throw it up on Twitter, and like I I posted it and like came back an hour or two later, and it was everywhere and like did that freak you out it was i mean there's no manual of like what to do when your video goes viral yeah. <laughs> you just kind of got to roll with it um but uh yeah it was just and then it was it was crazy because then like all these like news sites started picking it up and then it was on tosh.0 oh, and it was on uh the soup and it was on espn mm -hmm. and it was on um stephen colbert it was just like everywhere and like that's just crazy that Vice covered it for God's sakes. Yeah. Vice is covering like world issues and global corruption yeah. and stuff. And here they are covering this situation. I thought it was genius. And I, I have to say, I think there's a little bit of jealousy to the backlash too, because like you're a guy who's you trained, you're seasoned, you've started federations, like you have a history in pro wrestling. You're not some guy who came along as a journeyman and stumbled on something. Like this came to you, you took advantage of it and you clipped it out and not knowing what it was gonna do. It blew up like crazy. And then people come after you. I think there has to be a little bit of jealousy because, like, you and, and you're like in your you weren't in your 20s when this happened, right? You're like, you, you were a seasoned wrestler in your 30s, so you you grab this uh, situation and run with it. Why not? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I was so it's, the first one was in 2015. Right. I started wrestling in 2000, so 15 years in. Um, so yeah, I, uh, but there might be jealousy. I mean, it, no one. I mean, that's just the the way wrestling is, or, you know, any kind of entertainment. There's always a, a bit of that. There's always a bit right. of, like, we, we don't want our friends to do better than us, you know, as Morrissey would say. Or why did it happen <laughs> to him and not to me? Why did he right. figure it out? Yeah, Right. You know, it's it's one of those things where we're supportive of our friends until they start to, like, <laughs> get more popular than us, and then we, we want to hold on to our spots. Does it ultimately end up opening more doors for you or closing more doors for mm. you that you become the penis guy? Because obviously that means that you can't wrestle some places, but you're becoming really popular with a certain crowd. Um, it, it it definitely opened more doors for me. Um, I mean, it closed maybe one or two real big ones, but um, uh, the fact that the, I can do this independently and be my own boss and make my own schedule and like, I mean, that's the that's the goal of just about every career in the world is to be your own boss and, and set your own rules. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I do. Um, so in that sense, it's been very, you know, uh, good for me, very great for me. Um, and, uh, you know, and then different opportunities coming up from it, like, you know, uh, the, the mainstream crossover, um, which a lot of wrestling fans don't understand is that, like, my, my audience isn't the hardcore wrestling. I mean, it is. There's wrestling fans that love sure. me. But there, it's like all these people who don't live and breathe and die wrestling. They just want to be entertained and they think it's funny. They don't think I'm hurting the tradition of pro wrestling. Um, so I do have a big mainstream following and that, that a lot, like I was cast on the first season of Glow. Mm -hmm. I, to, I mean, it was to play a wrestler, but you know, I had a role on Glow. 
because those producers mm -hmm. had seen me wrestle and they were in entertained by it. So yeah. it does open more doors for me. Um, but yeah, it does maybe close one or two big ones. So your penis got you on Netflix, basically. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Multiple you times. I'm on a, I just, uh, they just released Magic for Humans season two and I'm in an episode of that. Oh, oh good nice. For you. So have you always, <laughs> is this what you always wanted to do? Like when did you get interested in wrestling as a kid or how, how did you get into this? Uh, I grew up with three older brothers. So I started watching wrestling pretty young. Um, and you know, so I was a fan, uh, through most of my life. I mean, I, I lost interest a little bit in like, uh, like maybe the early nineties, but, um, um, then like that WWE's attitude era and like ECW, they kind of made it cool again. So I started watching again and I just had friends that, uh, that were fans too. And, uh, after high school we were in college and I was like undeclared major. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then one of my friends suggested, he saw the advertisement for wrestling school. He's like this, this promotion trains wrestlers I want to try it but you know he didn't want to do it alone so he talked me and my other friend into going <laughs> and one, the, the, the other friend actually he signed up but he never actually went and then me and him uh, started training together and he went for about a year before he stopped and I just kept going wow but as somebody who you said you grew up on it and then you go and you train these two big doors that closed for you are probably doors that you looked up to growing up or at least one of them something that you wanted to be a part of is that ever been a concern for you or something that you thought of like, okay, maybe I do want to pivot at some point or is that off the table now? Um, yeah, it, it feels like, you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, it can it, it, any job, any, anything you do, any performance can get kind of tedious. And, you know, I feel like sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm tired of being the dick guy, but, uh, <laughs> but I think it would be irresponsible for me to like, uh, to alter it because, it does have such a fan following, and and what I what I learned is that, you know, I have a fan base that doesn't want me to go to the to the bigger places because they know that it's they're not going to this character is going to cease to exist. It's going to homogenize you, man. Yeah, yeah, and they want this character. They love this character. So, um, you know, I, I, I of course yes, you know, having a WrestleMania moment in my life might be nice, but um, I, I've 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 accepted and. Um, I'm happy with, with the way with the way I, the way things are going. You had, you had, oh, sorry. Go, go oh, so you had some big moments at the AEW, the most recent, the yeah. the AEW pay per views yeah. when they first exploded the bound, all the stuff they did. When you came out, man, that pop was insane. So, yeah. like, yeah, you don't man, maybe you won't have the WrestleMania moment, but you're still having these great moments with in these federations that like love wrestlers like you. You know, there must be some at least satisfaction for you in that. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, that was. Uh, you know that all in pay per view. I yeah, the all in. Yeah. I wasn't advertised or anything. I was a surprise, and the fact that like those ten thousand people were chanting for me um, was like uh, it was. It gave me goosebumps. Yeah. You know, and I like teared up while I was in the ring, and it was happening. Um, so yeah, that creating moments like that is 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 very fun. Yeah. I know I've already asked you a ton of penis questions, yeah. but I have more <laughs> because that's my job. Uh, <laughs> when when you were coming in, I said to Darina, like, dude, he because we were watching footage of you, and I was like, he does not get a boner while he's doing this. I know that's a crazy thing to say out loud and you guys at home are going to dick on me for it, pun intended. Nice. But like, I, how do you do that? You uh, you do a lot of stuff, men, women, I mean, everybody's touching your dick. How are you like, chill out, don't don't go yeah. anywhere, penis. And has it ever but happened and like now it happens less because you're so, or, or is it because you have the adrenaline going on? Like what's going on? Uh, my penis is very professional. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah, I think it's just a different mindset, you know. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't sexualize wrestling, and I don't, I don't think about it as, uh, you know, as, as a device or whatever. So it, it just, I, I, my my mind is not in the right place to get an erection. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I and, and you know, it's, I got to be careful too because I can't, as the character in wrestling, I can't over sexualize what I'm doing, even though I'm using a sex organ. Mm -hmm. um, I can't over sexualize it because then it becomes, uh, there's like a different level. If, it, if I'm just doing it because it has power and it hurts my opponents and I'm trying to win the match, then it's still in the context of pro wrestling. But if I sexualize it or make it like some sort of reason to get off, then it completely changes like what what the goal or the accomplishment or is. Or your character even. Yeah, yeah. That's what and great. for the audience, the audience, you know, the audience can laugh, you know, if it's if it's just funny, if it's just like I'm using it like a prop, yeah. Right? But as soon as I sexualize it, it, some people might get awkward about it and mm -hmm. weird. That's what was great about was it Sienna that you guys did that whole or, or the the, yeah. the public service announcement for? It was I was yeah. showing them before we came. I was just brilliant, like because yeah. yeah, that moment when it was hitting the peak of people 
being upset about it and thinking it was a sexual thing and it was inappropriate. And you, you had her do the public service announcement and you still beat her, but I thought it was genius to address it head on. Um, Who came up with that, I guess? That was her. That was okay. her. You know, um, the, one, of the, one of the blessings of this character is that it's so unique to me. So when people uh, find out that we're wrestling or I'm booked with somebody, they, uh, they start coming up with ideas because this is the one and only time they're going to get to do a, ma- a penis centric match, you know, <laughs> so like that, you know, like, so I get, I get to a show and, you know, I'm, I, go, I find the person I'm wrestling and we go to talk and, um, you know, they said, uh, you know, when I found out I was wrestling you, I, I came up with all these penis ideas and, like, <laughs> and they start shooting and I'm like, yeah, let's do them all, you know, because like, you know, I, I get that, like, I'm the one guy they can do this with and they can let loose and have a little fun with. Or have you thought at all? Because like you just said, you can't sexualize it. But even when you started it, you said 2015 was the first time. Yeah. Now it's 2019. I mean, with all the Me Too and things that have gone on, just we're in such a different state than we were even a few years ago. Yeah. Has that come up in any way? Like doing things like the PSA mm. or has anybody been like, no, I don't want to wrestle with you. You're the penis dude. Um, no, I really haven't had any issues wrestling anybody. Um, you know, uh, I think if you're in wrestling and you're, you know, and you want to succeed or you want to be, um, or you want to, you, know, you your, your goal is to please the audience. Uh, the first time I wrestled Cody Rhodes, I didn't, I suspected that he wasn't going to want to do it. You know, he's the son of Dusty Rhodes and he just came out of his WWE contract and, you know, and I suspected that, you know, he might be against it. But um, he said, he, he told me, he's like, we have to do it because the audience wants it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that a lot of wrestlers understand that the audience wants to see it so they want to pay it off do you like what he's building with AEW do you think it, this is actually going to be something that comes to the WWE level and like really goes at the WWE like back in the Monday Night Wars um, those guys are all my friends and I love them to death I, I, I'm, I'm happy for the industry mm. because now there's options and now there's you know um, bidding bidding for talent, talent right. the talent rates go up um, does so, that affect you um, it affects me on the independent level because a lot of these guys are now under exclusive contracts, so there's not as many name independent guys on the scene. So it gets it gets me more offers, which can up my rate as well. Um, so it does it does it affects the whole industry. Everything trickles down from the top. Um, so I like that. I like what it's doing yeah. for the industry. Can I ask one? Who's the favorite person you've ever flipped with your dick? Oh jeez! Uh, Is there m- one person that like you were like I can't believe they did it? Uh, Mick Foley maybe? Yeah, yeah Foley. Nice. Oh, yeah, really good ba- basically, because it was he pitched the idea to me. Like, right. I was he wasn't I was we were on the same show. We weren't even we weren't booked in anything together. And the promoter I, I was in I it was in Ireland and the promoter <laughs> That's awesome. said hey Mick's in this room over here he wants to talk to you and I, okay so I went in there and as soon as I got there he's like Mick's like okay I got the, I got this idea <laughs> and he like starts calling the spot my spot to me. And then afterwards, he's like, is that okay? And I was like, yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> is there anybody that you haven't flipped with your dick yet that you're like, oh, my God, they're on my dick flip bucket list? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I mean, I've done some major stars in wrestling, um, some Hall of Famers. And, uh, you know, and it's, and it's always cool when they want to play along with it and they want to, you know, you let, let, me, let me get the character over. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – I, I don't – I try not to think about like too much to like have necessarily have like dream matches or dream moments, but you know I've I've been blessed with the amount of people who have done it. Do you do do you can you think of though right now like your best and your worst match? Oh, so uh, far, yeah. <laughs> well, my best match was probably prior to the penis stuff starting. Um, it's uh, it was me and Candice LeRae, who I'm wearing I'm wearing the shirt of today. She's in NXT. She's awesome. She's NXT. in NXT now. Yeah. She's um, your bestie, right? Yeah, yeah. She was the best best man at my wedding. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, and uh, she, um, yeah, and we we were an intergender tag team, which was kind of different at the time. It's more a little bit more more, more um, yeah. you know pe- people use it more now. Um, but uh, and we wrestled the Young Bucks and. Uh, it was a pro wrestling gorilla, and it was a guerrilla warfare match, uh, which is a hardcore match, weapons and stuff. <coughs> and that people, t- t- I mean, that, w- that was 2014, I want to say, and people still, like, talk about it today. So yeah. that's probably my most well-known match, which kind of makes it my favorite, especially because I was with all my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, my worst match, I mean, 
I, I've, I've, I've had a couple. Um, <laughs> Why are you laughing? <coughs> what because, don't we know? Because there's some pro wrestlers hate talking about their worst matches. So it's like, you yeah, know, I you just gotta, want, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to like, because na- na- I don't want to name yeah. anybody. Yeah, or like, consult the know, other person. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all, it's all about the chemistry you have okay. in the ring. Oh, because worst match would mean that the other person. Right. It could be like people could look at it. I mean, it could be my, it. could be my fault yeah. too, right, or exactly. it could just be like the, a bad right. mesh, right. you know. Because you said you look back at your stuff and you're very critical of, yeah. of what you do. Is there been a, a time that you look back that you watched and you were like, wow, I just nailed that. That's the thing that I'm most proud of. Is it that Candace one? Uh, there might be that one. Um, I mean, there's there's a few of that, uh, a few of those that are moments I'm proud of. Um, you know, I don't hate everything I do. You know, I'm not like too i'm not too hard on myself but i always think that stuff could be better you know? um somebody in the chat Cino hour says that uh flip vince and man please <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be wild man it right? would never ever happen no. yeah I think it, that vince never, never, never say right right well i mean uh, I, I was told i was told uh that when the clip was going viral that you know obviously it hit the wwe locker room and right i'm sure they said like everybody was like laughing about it and talking about it and vince mcmahon too was laughing, oh, good. About, laughing about it have you but, met him Yes, he was. He used to be a, a oh. developmental, right? No, 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 no. I, oh. I, I, I've done some extra work in some dark matches. For right, WWE, right. Yeah, but never, never under contract. How is he? Uh, he's intimidating, um, and I mean, he's just he's not unapproachable, but you still are kind of on eggshells around him. Wow. Who was the guy for you growing up? Because you watched Hulk Hogan. For sure, Hulk that's Hogan. number one, son. What? Hulk Hogan. Yeah. What you too? Oh yeah, that's yeah. Of course, that's what I was gonna I say. Mean, I'm, a, I'm a child of the '80s, so you, you gotta know, flip like, Hogan one day. Yeah. If he ever leaves the WWE right. and then goes independent, you gotta flip. I don't him. know if his hip can take it. Yeah, but, fair, that's fair. True. But then again, Foley had Foley had just had re- hip replacement surgery when I did it to him. I, I think Hogan can take it. Yeah. Do you get nervous being with some of the legends? Like, what happens if they get incredibly hurt while you're? Penis flipping. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's pretty. It's a pretty safe move. Uh, it would have to be um, something very, very. Uh, something would have to go wrong, I guess, or someone like some. It would have to be some pre-existing reason that you know, like they. But I don't because I don't think just doing a somersault is going to hurt too many wrestlers. You were just telling me you have a, a bunch of shows coming up. I mean, I feel like every time I talk to you, you are you are not in Los Angeles. You're yeah. gone all the time. But what do you have this coming week? Uh, this week, I uh, well, I'm on uh, tonight. Actually, uh, this is airing live. I assume, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Tonight, I'm on Impact Wrestling on Access TV, um, which is the uh, company I work for now. Um, uh, uh, or the television company. I'm still independent. Like I'm not exclusive to them, but um, but they're the they're the major company that I'm like con- contracted to. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so they're they're on Access TV at eight eight o'clock, and I'm on tonight's episode. Uh, Actually, I'm doing pr- something non-wrestling, but it's pretty funny. Um, what does that mean? Uh, I'm doing more like a skit. Mm. Um, so, like, I'm doing this storyline where um, this other wrestler who does like an '80s throwback kind of character, he wanted to start a clique and like have us like take over the the the, the scene and like take all the money for ourselves and just wrestle each other. And so he asked for my help, and I agreed to it. Um, but then when he needed my help, I didn't. I wasn't there for him. So, uh, Bastard. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, this week tonight is his uh, receipt for me. I guess is is mm-hmm. um, and uh, what's that like payback? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And uh, so and it's it's a very fun segment that we did. That we is it pretty clever. It's probably maybe the most well written segment I've ever been in in wrestling. Um, wow. Damn. Yeah, yeah. It's very it's very fun. Um, and that, so that's airing tonight on um, Access TV at eight o'clock and. Uh, then Wednesday, tomorrow, um, I go to Vegas for a show, uh, and I just we're driving up and driving right back, and because Thursday evening I fly to England for three shows. Well, Fridays in Wales, uh, Saturday and Sunday are in wow. England. Then I fly home Monday, and then I'm home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday I go to Kansas for a show. Three Jesus. full days, yay! Yeah, yeah three four three full days at home. <laughs> are, this is a dumbass question. Well, not full days because I land Monday morning. Are you yeah. are you exhausted? Um, you know, I yeah, I but I've I've gotten really good at sleeping on planes. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's it, true. We we flew together and back, and he passed out the whole time. Yeah, mm. I had uh, nobody to talk to. Aww. Uh, I, I can't help. It's like. It's like a baby in a car, you know. Like I just, as, soon as, <laughs> yeah. as soon as the engine revs, I'm done. Like when Joey gets in the plane, he knows yeah. that yeah, yeah, I'm done. That's great. Um, uh, 
Was you, sorry, what, I lost my train of thought. I, I honestly don't even know. I think I just asked if you were exhausted. Yeah. And oh, you said yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, but it's I, I, I always think when I, whenever I'm like at my wits' end, I think about all the wrestlers that would love to be in the position I would, I am, and have the success I have, and then uh, also all the. I mean, maybe I have to get up for three or four 7 a.m. flights a week, but that's better th- to me. That's better than having to get up at 7 a.m. to go sit in a cubicle for eight hours. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. like I think about all the other jobs, and I don't. Mine's not so bad. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have with you, Joey Ryan. Oh, but yeah. also, uh, I know that you've got merch that you're selling and all that stuff. So we're going to really keep up with you and figure out uh, where we uh, can get all your dong shirts. <laughs> well, yeah. So Twitter, I'm at Joey Ryan online. Instagram, I'm at Joey uh, Joey Ryan. Um, uh, It'd be cool if you were just at Joey. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd Baller. be like Billy Corgan yeah. style. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, on Twitter at Joey Ryan is was taken is taken by some singer songwriter, so that we get he probably gets a lot of tweets he doesn't really need <laughs> uh, wow. about about penises. Um, <laughs> oh my god, probably so, very confusing. Yeah, yeah he's figured yeah. it out by so, now. But I got I beat him to Instagram, so Instagram I'm at Joey Ryan, um, and then my T-shirts are at prowrestlingtees.com slash Joey Ryan. Good website. And thank you to Darina, to John Roca. Thank you. To Cody Hall, Mark Riley, Alex, we missed you today. Joey Ryan again one more time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. So Thanks much for, for being here, guys. We'll be back tomorrow morning for Collider Live. I'm going to go get flipped. <laughs> <laughs>